Good morning, everybody. We are coming to you live from this wonderful Blue Maid Entertainment Center in Mountview, Minnesota, for our Baker Doubles, CBA Baker Doubles finals right now. Uh, we had a uh, qualifying yesterday, 52 teams, Baker Bowling. We're using two separate patterns. We used a Great Wall of China, which is uh, the pattern on the left lane, the odd lanes. And Middle Road version 2 is the pattern, which is the shorter pattern on the right lane, on the even, even lanes. This, we are in match 9 of 12 matches. Today. The way it works, and everybody bowls. Uh, yesterday, first of all, we had 16 games of Baker qualifying. And then uh, today is 12 two game matches. So you bowl two games, you bowl one match, uh, one game, and then you get a 15 point pins for if you win that game. And 15 if you win the second game. And 20 if you win the total so of 50 bowl pins per match, which is. Uh, been doing this used to be a best ball double since like uh, sometime in the mid to early early 80s I believe it was and we changed to Baker about 15 years ago a little bit better not as high score even though these scores look pretty high right now so we do have a four camera setup here but I'm not sure if they're all working right now Jason had three sets of cameras one should be showing the score and the other camera on that pair is showing the lanes. Uh, and so we had three sets for three pair. And we got four so we could actually film and show all four step ladder matches. Which would be a good thing instead of having to go back and forth the bowling on the same pair. So I'm not sure how that's going to work yet, but like I said, they're in match nine right now. What you're watching right here is Nick Heilman and Andy Mills bowling against Ryan Killinen and Brandon Brown. And uh, uh, the four-time defending champion, the Hillian Millie duo from lacrosse. Struggling a little bit today. I don't think they're quite up in the step ladder yet, but they have you know, four matches. This and a few more matches to go. Even though they lost the first game, didn't get that 15 bonus points.
All right, we're back. I had to step away. We had a little bit of issue over on lane 30, so I had to uh, make sure we got a full rack over there. As soon as uh, Jason comes out with the scores after the first day, excuse me, after the first day of matches, I'll give you the updates on that. But uh, like I mentioned, we take the top five of the, of the 12 teams, we take the top five into our stepladder. And it's still two game matches for that. It's a long, grueling two days of bowling. Even though at Baker, 16 games yesterday, you really only throw in the ball for enough for eight games, but it just seems worse than that because you're standing and you're putting your, other, your partner on and you're, you're kind of like throwing every shot, not physically, but mentally. And today, there are 12 two game matches, which makes it uh, a long, grueling day. Long grueling tournament. In order to win, you have to. Uh, it has to be tough. It can't be easy. I can give you the update. After six matches, the duo of Ben Lemieux and Matt Payne were leading. Oh, Jason, the crack staff of Jason Hansen just gave me the update after uh, eight games, or eight matches. So I'm going to read these off to you. So leading, still. Ben Lemieux and Matt Payne, they're at plus, what are they? I'm trying to figure this out because uh, you just put the scores in there. So that's uh, 8, 16, that's, uh, they're 423 over. They have 300 bonus pins. John Holmes and John Cryer, 23 pins behind them. Steve Bone Craig Schiffler at uh, 343 over. Take that back. Yeah, 343 over. The other ones are 423 and then 400 over exactly for Holmes and Cryer. The duo of Dave Langer and Brady Stearns are at 379. And then uh, Porter and Mattafee are fifth place. They're about 100 pins out of fourth right now, but they're still and only three pins ahead of Larson and Teplin. So you got bunched up there right now in the third, fourth, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh position. So a big, a pretty big jump though. First and second place looks like they might be holding on there and staying up no problem unless they really falter. But third kind of up in the air, but fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh are still in the running. Which seventh is the uh, Howell Square, Riley and Brennan Howe. And then we got Brandon Brown and Ryan Tillinen, who are eighth. Tyler and Mills are ninth, I've been talking about it, but they are 300 pins out of the line right now. Matt Meyer, Sam Sylvester, 10th, then we got uh, Clayton Moore and Justin Schiffler, 11th, and Anderson and Boyden round out the top 12. Like I mentioned, making this cut is a tough thing to do to start with. And then they got a bowl against the ones who bowled the absolute best yesterday. We watch uh, Nick Heilman pick up a four pin. They're going to win this game. I think they lost the first game. They're going to win, win total, so that always helps. With 35 bonus pins. Looking down on a couple lanes over, we got the Langer and Stearns bowling against uh, Bone and Craig Schiffer. I don't know what the first game was like, but uh, Langer and Stearns start out with a turkey. Schiffer just opened the third frame, so they have 48 in the third. So solid strike for a four bagger there. Over here, you can see up in the late 29 and 30, Matt Meyer, Sam Sylvester, duo. Now that strike up for a five, the front five. Sylvester Meyer, Larson and Tepley are uh, a double spare strike. Well, I don't know what the first game was here with uh, against uh, Hilly and Millie and. Uh, but. That's 18 pins. I'm not sure who won that first game, how much they won the first game by. So there could be a 35 bonus points for the Hilly and Millie duo. As Jason says, they need it. Oh. So. You can't buy feet without winning some matches and getting into the ladder. They were nice going into that match. 
Cats, and I don't know where the four bowlers are going to be. Five bowlers bins, I know they won at least 15. Jason Hanson joined the team with our CBA tournament director. A lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, setting up, I was talking about these four sets of cameras. We got four over here. We have one of them. A little bit, but other than that, everything looks really good. Next time, keep it down. Make a run. Make a run. We're going to try to get tricky back to back days. If you make it to the cross, then we'll be at Park Road the next day. So For the CBA? Yeah, for the CBA. So Saturday, Sunday. I said I'd get a tuxedo t-shirt. I'm going to have to do better than that. I have a, uh, when I do the outfit, I need to do a outfit. That's what I need. Yeah. All right. Tire, the guy say, uh, is a speakeasy type of thing. He's a black guy and a vest. He's got a hat. He's got a hat. I'll be wearing that. I've seen your get-up. It's a good look. Oh, it's a get-up now. Oh, get-up, yeah. Get-up yeah, attire. Get get it's not an outfit. We should get tips for that. Uh, we'll have a date for another set. I would think so. Yeah, we're yeah. Gonna... If, we do, if we do that, we're going to, uh, we're going to need a new computer. We are? Uh, uh, this is maxed now. Okay. It's all the input ports. Oh, I got you. Okay. okay. Although I do have expansion slots open, so we could expand. I guess we don't need a computer, I should say. We, we would need to expand okay. our computer. We can do that. It can be done. I like it. I know what I do. That was rough. I can do it Yeah. But I like I like this one here uh, because it's pretty cool because it's uh it's clear. You can see what's going on inside the computer with the, the disc spinning and all that, whatever. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> and you guys didn't I don't know if you caught that or not, but I caught the mic and it was just falling out there. Yeah, it was really good. It's, it's solid now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I like that too. That uh, you know the video card is obviously what's necessary for all of these cameras to work properly, and so that's a whole lot of things seal it up. But yeah, I like that they can clear up the sides of the bottom. You know, you kind of see the, the guts. And also, there's just a lot of white stuff here, <laughs> and extension uh, cords, and plug-ins, and Jason. I have no idea how you. Uh, first of all, literally you figured this out, and then set it up the same way every time. Okay. <laughs> or how? Errors and omissions. Errors and omissions in certain scores, uh, which happens all the time. Uh, it happens more than you think because it's always fixed again before a lot of stuff comes out there. But man, it's not easy running eight to five scores. And you know, the up have to be available for some Hey, there's a you know, ball in this lane, and then there's this happening. And a lot of stuff to be the current director, and I understand that. Hi, Debbie. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, are you uh, you guys bowling well up there? We've got a uh, fairly full squad of the Cavaliers, Safeway Bowl going, and uh, we've got three teams from the cities that are up there. Uh, she is on one of them, so I hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, it's tough when you're doing all of this, and then, you know, this tournament, we try to use every other player. <laughs> right, yep. Because right? I have a computer that tells me the names that it should be on, but then every other game with those lanes shift. The computer obviously, uh, at least my program at this point, well, doesn't account for it. Then you kind of have to do it half by hand. So you, yep, you're doing a lot in the head. And, uh, Which is the way I always did it anyway, by hand. I was old school. Yeah. yeah. But so, yes, it's, it's, it's a lot of its own issues come from that too. So I had a couple mistakes in there. We had to go to rearrange or, or move people to the right spot. So I was late getting the live stream going because unfortunately it was kind of a one-man show this morning. I didn't quite get here early enough to help, um, only because I didn't get here early enough to help. <laughs> I didn't. I guess. That. <laughs> I, I walked in at uh, seven when the door was open, just a hair uh, before. Uh, fortunately, I stayed on site here. The hotel was attached, so it was an easy walk down. <laughs> 
but I couldn't get really get in to start setting up before that. And of course, this morning they checked in at 7:40. Practice start at 7:50, and then I'm off and running. And, and everybody was here on time. Everybody was here on time. We don't have a. We used to have um, alternates come in and be here in case somebody didn't show up, and if somebody wasn't here, um, they, they could miss the shadow balls. But when somebody we used to have to look at the clock right today second if um, eight o'clock we started bowling and if somebody threw the first ball that person wasn't here then the alternate team would go in well now we don't have alternate teams and alternate players anymore um, what would happen here is if your partner didn't show up you can't bowl the game by yourself so what you would do is you'd have zero in the first frame and you throw the second frame and you'd be zero in the third because you'd obviously want to bowl the 10th frame if you're bowling that game by yourself. Right. Um, but everybody seems to show up on time, sometimes a little bit late, to find them a little bit, but they're here. Right, they're here. If they make the cut, they want to have a chance to bowl and win. Correct. Yeah, the last time I remember anybody really actually being late was a year-end tournament in this SP. Four or five years ago, uh, I remember it was at Cedarvale, but Kehoe came in uh, at the start of game three. And there wasn't an alternate that was there, so he just took a zero you know, for the first two games. Oh, right, okay, if there was no alternate. Um, lot of what we would do, the other rule is the highest finisher in the house. If there's somebody there watching that bowl the day before, they, they have to have bowled. Yep. And the guy could have been last. Yeah, but if he's the only guy there, yeah. he could have bowled. He probably didn't have a stop. Whoever it would be wouldn't yeah. think about bowling. There was nobody there. It was a 7.40 a.m. Nobody else was there. But I also remember that uh, he did not come in last. So okay, no, that's funny. To last. So he took two zeros and, and climbed up, and climbed up the ladder. Or yeah. climbed a little bit. Yeah. I remember one story. I'm not going to say who. Uh, Jeff Anderson, I mean... <laughs> A one time at Eau Claire, way, way back. This was that event in the 90s. And uh, he had made the cut, I believe, for the first time in Eau Claire. We always we used to get 200 bowlers, we'd take the top 24. And of course, that was a big party tournament. Uh, it was coincided with the opening of Wisconsin Deer Hunters and uh, the Bloody Mary Open, we call it. So people stayed across the parking lot at the hotel. And the alternate, we always had an alternate there because Sometimes they'd have two people come in because somebody wouldn't show up. Yep. And I'm up to task, and they had just started. They were like in the third frame, and an alternate had bowled, and Jeff comes in. He goes, what can I do? You know, I'm late. I go, I know. He goes, can I get in? I go, no, you're, you, you're late. But the alternate, he took his keys, he threw them on the ground, and the floor, whatever. <laughs> but he's only mad at himself. Well, for he, sure. he knew the rule. Yeah, absolutely. But I just, that one sticks out at me. Yep. Uh, actually, there's another one, but I'm not going to tell that story either. Maybe I will. It was a doubles tournament. Because uh, we used to take the alternate for a doubles tournament. And what would happen then is the alternate would come be here and the alternate would get all the scores. And we used to write them on a board. We used to have these markers on a whiteboard and we just uh, write the scores. And the alternate is supposed to do that and they also got extra 50 bucks. So, it's for the, so this would have been 50 each. So it's worth showing. It's worth showing up. Yeah. You, got, you got some extra money for that. And well, one guy. Um, the doubles team came in and he only came there to find out that if there was nobody to bowl, they were going to bowl. But uh, And he said, um, well, everybody's here, so I'm leaving. And I go, well, then you don't get the 50 bucks. Said, yeah, I should. I'm the alternate. And I go, well, no, the way to get that 50 bucks is you do the work. Right. So then we didn't give him that money. It caused all kinds of trouble. Uh, and that's probably part of the reason why we decided to not have alternates anymore. Because right. one guy can ruin it for everybody. That and a lot. It, it really right. does. Yeah, it does. Yep. That's uh, a lot of rules become rules because of. You could try to change the. Uh, uh, have anybody on the camera right now. So Tim Mayer is watching. He's watching Lane. Tim Mayer or whatever. Yeah, the, the mayor of Rochester. How you doing, Tim? Oh, and then we have the Howell's mother is watching. Where are they? Boys, boys are off camera. They're off camera, but I think they're doing pretty well. Where did I say they were? They were um, seventh, but they were only 52 pins out of the uh, fifth place of the show. It was good to see them both bowling yesterday. Riley, who had one CBA title, he's got two now, but one, one from last season where we um, gave the awards out last night. He was also the high average. He won the Jim Lindquist High Average Award. Good to see him bowling. I understand that in, uh, Brennan, I know I talked to him, he's living in uh, Arizona, so not easy for him to come up here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Pretty nice out today, but uh, yeah, we did, but it's going to get colder. Yep, yeah, it's coming. So they're uh, pretty much everybody's done. Nine. We're all in uh, match ten, but we need somebody to come over here. Uh, it looks like Langer and Stearns are waiting for somebody to come to twenty seven. Looks like you're, looks like your leader. Oh, we're going to have a good match here. Twenty seven. It should be good. I did watch the last game uh, with Langer and Stearns, and they were uh, going along pretty good in uh, Big Four for 10 frames. We only had 240. They could have 270 in that game. Langer took it to the next for 30 picks. Uh, I, I know they won the match. I think they won actually both games. They got the 50 bonus pins. 30, 20, 30 more pins. And you just miss by 10 or 20. Sometimes it's a lot. Jimmy Mayer, did you bowl down the MSC down in Rochester? I, I couldn't make it. I was too busy. I couldn't get away to go down there and bowl. But, uh, I know I used to see it once a year down there. Except for that one time I was in uh, Fort Myers last year and I'm standing in line getting a beer at the Twins Red Sox game. I'm talking to somebody and it turns out the guy from Rochester and he knew you, Tim. So, See, that's what I said. He said it's a rock show. So the first thing that happened to me, we uh, dropped out. I don't want to go to the I asked him about that. He said he'd go to the lanes and I got to go to the lanes. He didn't know he didn't want to them, but I got him to the lanes. Well, of course. He actually took a picture of me and him and said it to Tim. I don't know if you remember that. And of course, Brady Stearns is number one fan. Aaron, yeah, it really is looking good. Uh, this was my first time in uh, since the remodel has been done. Uh, Asking units, I believe, also. They're, since the last time I was in the those look good. Uh, the whole floor, both concourse and set team. The only thing that I hear is the winter and the winter is coming around here. The whole conference back here is all the LVP flooring. Good laugh, but it wasn't the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's it going to be like to bring it in the St. Paul Bank with uh, snow on it? They're going to be a lot of rubber. The carpeting also does help. Yeah. They do have some rugs. They said they're going to put more rugs down, but then when you drag bowling balls, Bags are going to move, so I'm not sure how that's going to be. Yep. No, I agree. That would be the downfall. Yep. The other thing actually here is I love the look of all of the, like you said, the laminate flooring or whatever it is. But it is the best when it comes to the puddles. And uh, if you notice all the banners that are up there, uh, we talked about that last night at our awards banquet. That Neil Klein up here has done all those. So the red ones with the gold lettering, all the Hall of Fame members. And all the other ones, if, you, if you've won a title, currently, I guess, we, we still had a lot of the old ones that Steve Spurs started making with a lot of felt. Uh, we still had a lot of those. We used to put stars on And for each tournament uh, that you won. And we'll got to be one. Carl, I think it's Sam Lanto, goes out about 20. Well, that was kind of like all peppered. And then Chad Nelson decided to go past him and it's 39, so we couldn't fit 39 yep. stars on him, so we just have the title. We don't, we don't know how many titles they won. But he can ask me, and I can pretty much tell you who right. they won. But they really look nice. And, and being out there on the masking unit, it, looks, it just looks really professional. I took some pictures yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's there. great. Well, I didn't see what happened. Uh, 28 over there, but then the new one, eight missed. Yeah, I think it was a 6'10. I didn't catch it until after the ball had gone past it, but I think that's what it was. I played a lot. Um, I was on that time. guys uh, for a long time, and then he bowls league, uh, the retail league, and he's even out of the time. So I've seen the league. Um, 
was a uh, Minnesota Grizzlies champion. Right, a lot right. Of people don't remember that, but and he beat Lumpy uh, in that final match. Well, uh, if you want so, to win a Masters, you almost got to go through that's Lumpy. That's right. He's pretty much there in every one of them. And now he's a senior. Right. Now he can bowl the senior Masters. That's not fair. Right. Good shot by Matt. But anyways, uh, we'd always look at that first spare that Matt would be even. We kind of gauge how the day was going to go based on... <laughs> Result of us, he'd always come back and he'd go, Well, bad Ben's here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come back here. Oh, good good ben. Ben. That was, uh, you remember? Uh, obviously, he was joking or whatever, but even if he was bad, he still was going to try hard. He probably still was pretty good. Uh, we used to say that about uh, Tom Havlis called Jeff Slap. Uh, if he was on, it was Slap on or Slap off. <laughs> I saw Jeff clap. Uh, he stopped at the Senior Masters. He lived up in Blaine. We had the Senior Masters up there at, uh, at uh, Bolero Blaine. Yeah, and he said he's going to maybe try to get back into bowling. As you can see, uh, Brady can strike every time. He had a little bit of trouble striking, but he got the one to the pocket that time. He went seven, light, light, and then half ten. And I got to believe he's going to tweak, do a little trick, and he's going to strike. So when I don't know if you mentioned, I'm sure you probably did, but the left lane with a longer pattern he's out on, uh, the right lane has a shorter pattern, so, uh, you know, sometimes when I see one pattern not quite get lined up, uh, a lot of times you'll play them on the next lane, they'll start to whack it, and maybe their game favors one of those patterns and the other. Well, those two are fairly similar. Correct. Um, so I was just saying that I thought uh, Lumpy would like strike right there, but he threw the ball and he's shaking his head and he looked back. Now that's exactly what Sam had yesterday on the long pattern. We go right, light, and all of a sudden we find a hook spot there. And we can shoot a nose like that. And that is to me the toughest spare. He made it look pretty easy, but that is the toughest spare out there. So even the best bowlers are struggling at that time. So you talk about the long pattern, which is the left lane. That's the Great Wall of China, correct? Yep. Yep. And that was supposed to be 48 feet. I don't think it played. It didn't seem to play it that long to me. I would think the panels here probably okay. have friction down lane. Okay, so that's so possibly what it was then. Probably checked up a little bit quicker. Less oil is going to actually right. push down on it. And the right lane is the middle road version two, yep. which is 39 feet. Yes. Oh, and Brady does the same thing same that. Uh, he said they were similar. That's right. Let's see if he's as good a spare shooter as David Langer. Well, he's very good spare shooter. I don't think anybody's as good as David Langer as a spare shooter. I don't, I've, it's one of those things that I heard somebody say this uh, the PBA tour when you walk by and all of a sudden you. You, you can hear when someone misses a 10 pin, the ball hits the back, and then you look up and it's saying like it's, it's, you know, Pete Weber, you go, wow, he never misses them. You, you, you hear the ball hit the back, you look up and it's lumpy, he missed a 10 pin, you go, wow, that never happened. And he does it just with the same ball, the strike ball, he just uh, changes his hand position, does something, whatever. Brady made that like pretty easy too.
It's just amazing the people that want to get them. And what people who find out is unbelievable. Yeah. So I see uh, Chad Nelson is watching. And from afar. Usually he's watching from right down there on the lanes. Yeah, right in the center. And then it's still unfair that the owner senior cash. Yeah. Right? That goes to buy. And of course, but you know what fault that is? No, it's Sam Lantos and mine. We're shooting 148 our last game to lose by 10. So, you're welcome, Chad. Okay. Okay, we got a good match here. Uh, Matt Payne's He just needs, needs to make sure he gets the ball. Niners strike this out. One of eight, okay, so we're going to come one. Even the man who must agree has to have this strike to win. And if they do, the difference between the two games is Stearns and Langer picked up all their spares. They had a couple of tough ones. And LeBue had them all. This will be in the pocket, I'm pretty sure. It doesn't matter if he strikes or not. Off his hand and he seems like he's going to have to do Well, now he just needs seven. Yep. And I was, just, big deal. And I was uh, just talking about the Langerster. You all will pick up the other pair. And the one open by Ben. It just constantly uh, opens, especially the uh, uh, error. What's the one thing? Can't break up when you want to get one or two pins, whatever it is. But to miss easy squares, we did a lot of that, yes. Like I say, when you need the uh, when you need that, throw your best shot, leave it that temp. So, well I'm glad Chad now. watching the other team on the other lane to see what's going on. I'm sure Ben plots and thought that it was a hook five will hook more, but you still don't really know how much to move to you throw your ball and read it. He'll go one hook spot. <laughs> I, I saw that. <laughs> That's <laughs> Nevin Brady. I told him that yesterday. He wore those skinny jeans I want. Okay, that was pretty hard and firm. And it's still the same thing. He's looking down. I'm sure Ben talked to him also. As a doubles team, you have to uh, communicate really well too, so that if somebody does something, makes a move, and they or don't make a move or whatever, they have to be able to read the other. As you can see, they're, they're discussing it right now. Brady threw one a little bit too far right on that lane, not knowing how much he was going to hook. Jason Lutkin is watching. One of the first bowlers to ever win the CBA MJBT doubles tournament. He won it with Brad Subak. Had to be back in, uh, I think it was like early 90s when we started it, right, Jason? He's got to be close to 50. He should be out here in this MSC. Jason Lufkin, just talking about. Rich Holmes is standing in our booth right here. And his son, Johnny, is down here bowling. Him and John Cryer, who are right now, they're in the top five. And I always tell this story. Rich Holmes, we just talking about I've known Rich since the morning. Somewhere around in there. 
the Rich's dad was my first ever bowling coach in 1967 at Maiden Bowling Center in Columbia Heights. And what I remember about it, I don't remember him telling me a whole lot of what to do. Whatever. One time I remember I threw a ball, I might have had a strike, or I think I had a strike. And then the next time I get up there and I, and I didn't hit the pocket, and he goes, uh, you got to make sure you stand in the same place when you can line up there. And I go, oh, I did. He goes, no, you didn't. You were four boards left. And I go, this is how he's watching me. So I remember that. If you're going to strike, if you're going to throw the ball, you have to stand in the same spot and throw it in the same place. You can't just arbitrarily walk up there and do it. And I was 12 or 13 years old when he told me that. And he told me all the time. Well, that's the two-handed game. Yeah. See, yeah, a little more, more reverie than yeah. I had or had. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, I like to hear those young bowlers who just bowl a lot because they can only get better. And then well, we, there's one here, uh, Zach Andrews, who he just turned 18, but he won the CBA last month. And he is the youngest to ever win a CBA title. And he, I'm not sure how old he was when he started bowling, but I talked to him if he always was two-handed, and he said no, he started out bowling one-handed, and then he would practice once while throwing two-handed. He couldn't believe how many strikes he could get, so then he just started doing that. And he is the best two-handed we have around here right now. That, yeah, there's a lot of good ones, but he is the best. Right now, uh, the two-handed is the way to go. I wish I could do it. Teach them, right? Yeah, right. Do you tell those young bowlers to also try try to throw one hand? Uh, you know, a lot of right. Right. No, right. But if somebody's if somebody's one-handed and you want to try to change them to two-handed, you don't want them to forget the one hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if somebody starts to then just. Tell you a story about the kid. I do not. Well, he's from Florida. He lived on there. My old man. Ken Bolton about five six years. But anyway, last year in the city of Germany. Oh. Just the, the the amount of revs and the pins know when there are more revs on the ball. <laughs> well, come on, Rich, you got to help them out. You got a pro shop. You can. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rich Holmes is the owner of Left and Right Pro Shop. Been for I don't know what 50 years, Rich. Uh, you were we were at Maplewood Bowl for the longest time. That's where I. So I used to bowl in that. Uh, what was it called? The White Bear Dodge Masters League. Yeah, they had a couple leagues there, a couple scratch leagues there, but I remember that one. I used to bowl that. 
Oh, yeah? The old Mexico team. Yeah. Greg Chido, Jim Chido, Rich Warren, Tom Bianchi, and myself. You have that picture? Wow. I think I have it somewhere, too. Okay. Yes. Okay, we're having a little trouble with our microphone staying locked in here, so hold on in case you hear a bunch of noise. I'm trying to fix this. We have a clamp that's on the side of the counter and it keeps uh, loosening up here. And I can tell why, but because uh, it's kind of rounded and then so the. But I think it's going to be better now. I think I got it on there a little better. Thanks. If not, we'll fix it again and we'll tell you. Keep it clean here in the booth. Mm -hmm. oh, you're 87 years old, Rich. It's okay. <laughs> uh, you're right, though, Rich. Uh, dead bends or strikes. That's kind of what. Uh, if you live in the pocket, you're gonna leave that. And all you want to do. <laughs> That's the age. That's our age. You know, he's a senior. He's 61, 62 years old. Uh, Medic, as Tom Havis always said. A medic. You need a medic. It's a dead ten. Okay, let's get back to this match over here because it's a struggle on this game for both teams. So, oh, that double is huge. They're in the 130s in the eighth frame. So they're within 13, 12, 13 pins. Depending on how you the all important ninth frame to load up here. And a solid eight. Just not fair, Rich. Deb, they are in match 10 of 12. This is the second game of match 10. Solid strike for Ben, or for uh, Matt. So they can strike out for 194. And uh, we need to get up there, strike out for 196. So we got we have a 10th frame. Match in them, lots of both here. A lot of pressure to put on on uh, Brady right now. Match strikes here. No oh, half ten. I think he kind of knew that too. When he was off his hand, he didn't quite think he had it. It wasn't going to be high flush. So a good count here. Obviously eight or better than a mark. Seven was not good. Now we have the possibility of a tie. Exactly. Uh, now, I think Matt's going to pick up this ten. In a six started just six ten, not the easiest thing to see on either. Matt's going to that ten pin, they have one eighty three, they're they're worse than these times. Um but so right. And you chop the three six up the three up the six ten, which all the time. So and that was the first and second, or first and fourth, first and fifth, and we're not going to have to see where the city right now. Nikki Herzrud. How are your Yankees doing? Oh, wait a minute. We uh, didn't do very well yesterday. And they're on the brink of elimination. I'm not sure if you're still wearing that Yankees hat or not. Corey, the Howe brothers are, um, they were like, they're going to be in sixth or seventh. They were going into match nine. So as soon as we get 
We'll be done with match 10 right here. We'll get the scores of Rito's Opti, but they're they're right in the hunt still. So. And 26. We're going to get Jason over to show me how to do that. And we've got a uh, good match in front of us here. We're going to find out what other camera we can watch. Um, not sure where uh, we're coming down over here. Somebody might be, Langer Stearns might be going over to 29 and 30. And they might, I think they'd be going with John Holmes and John Cryer, yes. And you saw uh, Scott Anderson just missing that seven pin on lane 25. We're going to see if we can get this camera switched over. We're going to figure out how to do that. I'm going to do this right here. Oh, look at that. I got it. I think I can do that without Jason. So we're going to watch this match right here because John Ryan are going to blow really well. This is the this seems to be a really good match. So you go down there and watch it. You can tell them where to play. And uh, Rich was wrong on that. Uh, John Holmes has been at times. I know that for sure. It's going to be a good match. Johnny and Lucky are best friends. They'll have a good time. Nikki, I can't, you're not going to get the next score. You'll be lucky to win the game today. I'm talking about your game, but I can't say much because my twins, uh, once again, they struggled, didn't make the playoffs. Like we always say, wait till next year. I'm also cheering for the Phillies today. I'd like to see them get to the World Series. Nikki, I kind of am cheering for the Yankees. I really don't want Houston to win. I just can't see him doing it. So Scott Anderson, uh, he's off your uh, off to the left. He couldn't see down lane 25. He left another seventh and picked it up that time, barely. But he picked it up. Doesn't matter. Yes, Nikki, anybody but Houston, I'm with you. All right, so Jason and I talked a little bit about uh, the next live stream. So, Nick Heilman and Andy Mill from the cross, uh, they always have a tournament. I'm not sure who sponsors, we have three or four sponsors, but the cross open. It's on November 19th. And uh, Jason is going to bring the uh, camera and the computer down there to the live stream of that tournament. And I'm going to go down there and help them. And then that's on the 19th of November, a Saturday. Then Sunday, the 20th, is the CBA, which is that part of the world. So we should be doing back to back live streams. Yep. Hope you'll be tuning in for the Lacrosse Open, November 19th in Lacrosse, Wisconsin. Imagine that, John Holmes left another 10 pin. Like Rich said, Peter Stryker 10 pin. But, he's very good at picking up. I missed three of them yesterday. And we missed Cassidy by 10 pin. We missed the senior Cassidy by 10 pin. Spares are very, very important. And I always say that 10 pin should be one of the easiest pins to pick up because you leave that more often than any other pin, and if you just focus and stand where you stand and you use your spare ball, I use a spare ball, uh, and you hit the target at the arrows, you should, you should be definitely. Yeah, it's a 
lack of focus. Is he thinking about trying to leave it, try something different? Yeah. That's why I'm just an amateur. I don't think John Cryer liked that. I know he didn't like that, but he must have got it in in the whole pocket. High plus strike for Luffy right there. Making that a double. for a double, which he does not carry that. Little you and Payne got a lead. Dave Langer with another strike. The difference there is they have a double and the Holmes and Cryer duel. So you're watching Johnny looking at his feet. He's making a minor adjustment. Let's see if he changed balls or not. And at that 10. carry that, but throw your best out, leave that 10, pick it up. But Brady went high last time, broke up that split. Solid 10 there. Greg Strike watching. Yesterday. Can't remember how they did. I'm gonna have yesterday's uh, qualifying scores with me. So okay, you know, 48 to 7, spare up on the eighth. Langer scores. John Pryor, he strikes here. Look, like he's going at a Dutch base. Keeps going that way, and he strikes out there, they have 210. Which is the max they can get. Oh, not the max. Sorry about that, I got ahead of myself. Johnny Combe could strike it off. Max that would be something. That's the update after 10 matches. See here after 10 matches. Wow, so they are, let's see, 10. 48.92 for Lemieux and Payne. And they're just ahead of Holmes and Cryer at 48.71, so they got 21 for Holmes and Cryer. Steve Bowen and Craig Schiffler, third at 48.22, so they're about 50 pins, or actually 7 pins out of the lead. Langer Stearns, 4696. Uh, he was hanging in there at fourth and corner and Manaphy get up to fifth place at 4684. 
Larson and Tepley are 45 50. So there you go. They're 130 out of the show. You'll see what Tom Holmes does right now. This has to be a strike to have any chance. We get the chance to go So now we're down to the second way. Two pin advantage for uh, Holmes and Carter. Third strikes there. Particularly 220 possible. And uh, up to 10 pin to four, a little bit light that time. The max second end is too early. John Carter has not missed yet on uh, that light night. Uh, he wants at least nine. So we can go nine spare strike, but two will not be. So it'll be in the pocket. And somehow he seems to get the uh, strike when he hits the pocket most of the time. The only one that he, uh, he didn't like was that first one when he got one high. And Bach, he just wasn't quite ready. Not sure if he threw him off or he just wasn't thinking, decided to stop, which is uh, yeah. actually a good thing. If you're not ready, maybe the ball slips on your thumb or something, don't just go up there and throw it just for the heck of it. So I said the other the score, they had Larson and Tepper at 25 15, so they were about 30 pins out of the ladder. And the Hall Brothers, 45 0 1, so they're 80 pins out of the ladder. 83 pins would be fair, with two matches to go. Now they're killing him, 43 86, so they're, they're probably a little too much out. Um, well, here's almost 300 pins, so they're pretty much out of it. So the only. Well, uh, the Hall Brothers, 180 pins out of the ladder. So they're on John Cryer with the solid strike. Uh, win that match. Or that game. The match isn't done yet. Uh, you mentioned there are patterns here. Left lane, longer pattern, right lane, a shorter pattern. Not sure. One pattern will favor some One might favor the lefty more than the righty. See what happens here in uh, the next game. And John Cryer wanting to strike here. He wants to get the game. He wants to get as much pins ahead of a possum.
Some of these lanes over here, you see a lot of people they go from one lane to the next, going high, left handed or right handed. And it's hard for uh, when you have a lefty right team to uh, uh, be able to tell your partner, right, this one hooks more. Well, he's on the left side, it's a little bit different than the right side. When you have two of the same, you can, you can talk about that a little bit easier. John, he's going to at least get two here. Oh, he got three. He kind of went for it in a way. He didn't want to like miss them all because Yama strikes. He needed that extra pin come right there. That's pretty good. Three, you can get those pins to bounce around out there. You had a chance. Can't wait to see it done. But so I was talking about uh, Dave Bortson, who won uh, his first CBA title last year. He was the oldest bowler to never win his first CBA title. And so now, and he also had the most Hall of Fame points without having a title. Well, now that he won, it, this, that distinction goes to John Holmes, who has the most Hall of Fame points without winning a title. A little caveat to that, like I told you today, if he was to win today, if he was to win today, he would have title, which would be a doubles title. And so I only have one title, which is a doubles title. So that I would actually have the most Hall of Fame points when I just to win a doubles title only. But now I'll have to look, and then after that, if there's somebody who has not won a title with the most Hall of Fame points, would go down to Mark Steiner. And he's not bowling CBAs anymore, so he's not going to change his Hall of Fame points. All right, some of the scores are coming in now for a match 11. The bowlers that were down at the lower end of the house. Uh, somebody down there at 288, I can see. That's who it was. Could have been, uh, uh, could have been Hilly and Miller. I'm not really sure. That would have been a second game. We'll so have to see how the kind of moves are going to be. Happening after after game 11, we'll have to we'll have a position round, so we'll be probably taking a little break after this whole match is done here. Right, let's go back to this match we're watching here on 29th and 30th. 
in that right lane. Now Dave Langer's striking, and Brady's not in the right lane. Uh, looks like, uh, let's see what Cryer does right here. Solid strike after that um, split in the second frame. I'm not sure what John Holmes left. He got that six count spare. They got a turkey. Brady, uh, we'll see him coming from far down with a different bowling ball. Not sure what he's going to. I can't keep up with all the bowling balls these days. Way too many of them. Roll right up at the pocket. John Holmes is the master at that. Still soft off his hand. He gets it down the money. You let the ball be the one, so whatever bowling ball it is, whatever the weight block is in that ball, along with the surface, the ball will do what it's supposed to do. You just gotta let it work. And one of the best guys years and years ago, Jim Lindquist, was a master at that too. He used it like a slow hook. He just let the ball work. The same lot to always tell me that. I have a hard time doing that. Well, whatever blade he did right there, I don't know if you change balls or not, but you gotta we were talking quite a bit. They're still discussing. Brady's about half a lovely day. I mean, lovely just turned 50. Brady is 25, 26, I believe, something like that. There's a lot of discussion right there. Back on to the You don't want to let up. Be a big shot for Lumpy right here. Keep it going. See what he does. Solid strike, just like nothing. He didn't run it out, didn't get excited about it, didn't need to, didn't need anything. You see all these people using the slap off thing, you know, to try to get to the other board. Spending the second frame. And then the dead ten for John Holmes. He'll pick this up. Two thirty-seven max. Two sixty max. Brady and Lumpy. We'll see. This is a must strike. Definitely a must strike. What does it look like? He did an hour if he lost it at the bottom of the swing there. It would happen, but it never picked up. Five count for them. Match is pretty much over. Holmes and Fryer are going to win, I believe. Both of them. And the 50 votes. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to pick this up because they still need the pin. Even though you're not winning the bonus pins, you're not going to win the match. You still need pins. It's still huge. Well, John Carter needs to stay clean. And they'll win the game. Unless he does something drastically bad. Which I don't think he's going to throw it drastically bad at all. He'll, he'll at least fill the 10th frame. And now it doesn't really matter. Just good job right here. Eight, nine pins a win. That's the most scores I've ever run in the house. And at this point, too, when you're matched 11 of the 12, and you're holding like a 22nd, uh, 21st or second game of Baker, you kind of you kind of lose a little bit of focus. It's about done here. We're going to start, we're going to probably shut the mic off for a little bit here while Jason gets all the scores and before we start position round. Uh, we 
You all right, Danny, don't worry about it, buddy. We're good. It's a little cold in here. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling it too now, buddy. You remember a little crapper. Him and John Cryer, a little crapper about maybe almost missing that five. <laughs> I'm still curious what happened to uh, that eight frame shot by Brady. Not sure if he came off his hand funny. Or Tired. I'm not yes. I'm not really sure what he did. But, uh, it wasn't up to his standard at all. Hey, you see, okay, so John Craig did not really need to have that to win. So the focus, you can just see the top notch focus was not there in that one frame. Okay, well, that one hooked back. Came a little bit behind the head pin, so that's why the tent was uh, left right there. If you would have done that, and the eighth ring would have been a whole different story. Yes, I turned 18. Alright, I'm going to shut the mic off here, and we'll be back right after, uh, right before position round. Keep it turned back on when Jason gets all the scores, and we'll discuss and we'll tell you what's going on then.
Jason is uh, giving the instruction for position around right here. So as he's reading them off, I'll, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear him or not, but I'm going to tell you what they're Your number one seed, Holmes Cryer at 5361. John Holmes, John Cryer, 5361. Ben Lemieux, Matt Payne, 5335. So there's 26 pins. Between those two right there, first right, and second third, place. We have got Bone and Schiffler, 52-59. Steve Bone, Frank Schiffler. Uh, Taylor Corner and Manaphy, 5195. Corner and Manaphy at 5195. Uh, so they're um they're still 140 pins out of second. They're uh, 200 pins out of first. Corner and Manaphy. Yeah. 49-31. You guys are 31-30. I'm trying to listen to Jason at the same time what carries has gone on. So I'm, so hold on here. Uh, so get back to right. Holden Cryer, 5361. Lemieux and Payne, 5335. Holden and Schiffler, 5259. That's 100 pins out of first. Corner and Mattafee at 5195. So that's 165 pins out of first. Langer Sturms at 5105. So they're basically 200 pins out of first, but they, and then Larson and Tepley are 4931. So Langer and Stearns are six, 74 pins ahead. Uh, so they pretty much just need to like win a game, bowl decent and win a game. They should stay in there. So. Two on each or just go? Yeah, no, two shots on each and the higher seed. Then the Howe brothers, 49 to choose which lane they want to so start okay. out of a chance to make the ladder unless they shoot about 550 and win their 50 bonus pins and say Langer and Stearns would shoot about 350. I can't see that happening. The top five are probably set. We still could jockey for position as far as getting into the ladder. For the um, first, second could switch. Uh, maybe the fourth place could move up. The fifth could move up to fourth, but that still gets them into the ladder. Um, so, I believe the top five are going to stay the same. We could have a new winner. Not really sure, depending on who comes through on that. We got some new people up there, Holmes and Fire. Fire has won this uh, tournament before with Mike Words as his partner. And uh, last year, I believe they might have been third, if I'm not mistaken. Holmes and Fire, they were in the ladder, I know that for sure. Langer and Stearns haven't won this. Uh, Langer's got about six, I believe, doubles tournaments. He's got five of them with his brother Dan and one with Chad Nelson. Jordan Schiffler. Schiffler has not won a CBA title. Really never bowled him at all. So we're going to try to switch this camera over to 27 and 28. And that is the first and second place. And then to the side you can see 31 and 32. That's where the little storm is going to be. That's going to be a longer stop. They're going to be at 23, 24, so I'll switch back and forth to that one also. Kind of keep you, uh, see what's going on, see if I can keep up to date with all the scores and who's moving around here. Have a little bit different, uh, maybe you know, move in a little bit, try to uh, sometimes just go back to the same one you were using, but it gives you a little opportunity to do that. Uh, looking back here to my uh, tournament champions, and uh, God, I wasn't sure, but Steve Bowles does not want a CBA title either. He does have a master's title, I know that. Obviously, Craig Schiffer does not have one. Holmes does not. Ben Lemieux does not. Matt Payne. He's got three of them. Which uh, he does. 
Corner or does not. Matthew's got a four. Langer with 18 and Green Stern with 11. They have not won this one yet. So, a lot of stuff to have right here. Green does not want to double. He gets a single. I'm not sure if he brings gold with the four star ball with Langer. Definitely good enough. Well, I, mentioned, I mentioned that, and they won three out of four. They were fun. Darren Carlton won a Chuck's number. He wanted to see the band back together. But uh, Chuck could not bowl. And, uh, Chuck's two kids. They became the Bamba Shaw's. Exactly, yeah. Was, uh, Zach, Ryan Benson, I bowled this way. My Hall of Fame points here, because I want to see my Hall of Fame points. Steve Bowler is not having a fight. So it's a really small thing. Well, that's not what I want. I want Hall of Fame points. I got that set up. I got it right here. So let me look at Steve Bowler. He's got to be up to the center.
We go to 24 and watch uh, the bone ship against Mattapian Corner. Right there. The top six Absolutely. Chuck Bastard, I used to say that his dad used to always Chuck's dad came watching the Liberty CBA and his battle was Chuck and Sam were winning every other month. They were back and forth winning and won the fight, won the fight, won the fight, won whatever. But Chuck led a lot of tournaments on Sunday. This match had 10 games qualifying on Saturday, the back to 12 games, the match play on Sunday, and then the top five. So they were always two day tournaments. And Chuck would sneak in there like the low and uh, a lot of times. And then get there on Sunday, and it was never going to change at all, which it didn't Saturday either. But his back would be Chuck would slap back and he would break a house shot, whatever. Each, whatever. House had their own shot. each house had their own shot, whatever. 
Sometimes they favor left, sometimes they didn't. But Chuck used to lead a lot of them. I wish he wouldn't lead them anymore because you know, wouldn't have them. <laughs> I'm going, well, that's pretty good, though. 50% is a half. Yeah. yeah. And at one point, he had 11 first, 11 seconds. Not at one point. Still now, he had 11 first, 11 seconds. He might have 12 seconds. With him and Zach, for a second. Oh, well, that was a solid eight for a mat. Uh, Zach and Chuck Vassar were running a second at a double statement a few years ago. A little tongue in cheek there by uh, Matt Fink. It's just not fair, is it? No, a little game. Yeah, but you can't do anything about that. Great shot now, I see. Despair. Right. Ben. Bad Ben. I told Ben that we uh, yeah. mentioned the Bad Ben with that. And he goes, man, I hope my dad's going to the live stream because he'd love that right <laughs> Okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, he made a chance to turn me. So that he's still a match, you know, but now that really, well, not a match, but a game, which is a right. 15 bonus, but and it kind of takes the wins out of the stage. You're definitely all that good, and then that's not meant to be. Right, because the most you can have now is 230 something, whatever, but they could have had, you know, 250, and uh, and Holmes and Cryer could have 260. Uh, ooh, that was one of the few fast shots by John Holmes, especially on that right lane, which is a shorter pattern. Which, uh, he obviously got that in, or, or some, or maybe out, because it wasn't watching from behind, it was watching from off of the side. Uh, could have hooked up early, or could have got it out and hooked too much, but he's, he's so good at piping it up 10. I don't know what he did there. Johnny and I were on the same tournament team together for a while. Anytime we went somewhere, we had a tournament, uh, we'd always go to out to the gutter right now just to see. You know, is it going to give us where our comfort zone is? Yeah. Uh, I also like to play for a while. I feel a lot more comfortable. Us just being really kind of how I grew up. I have become a lot more comfortable getting left, and I don't mind getting left a fourth there and even in the fifth. Whatever. But of course, I feel like I'm going to get a little better and be more comfortable. Correct. So we'd always go and try that, you know, in the first frame or the first few shots, and if it was there, Johnny would go, those fools. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you a story how that came from. You probably don't know the story how those fools came from. Way, way back at Eau Claire, uh, Lindy Lundin, who was one of the best people to ever play out by the gutter. And I'm talking, not just out by the gutter, one board. Yeah. He would actually stand and loft kind of over the right gutter to hit that one board. And so he led the qualifying on Saturday with our 10 games. And first of all, that was a very bad shot by John So that eight pin is huge that Matt did carry, but if he gets this one right here, the ninth spare. Yeah, he'd probably be a lucky one. I don't know, that wasn't really lucky. That was just high plus solid. He's going, yeah, carry, carry this time. So huge turnaround, yeah. huge turnaround right there with everything. And they were uh, 26 pins. So another strike here gets another 10 pins. Oh, 223, they can have 230. Well, first of all, he needs nine or eight spare on the time. So this has got to be, this solid eight would be okay if he left it even with one check for 10 pins, but that would be a win. Or, yep. And that wasn't, I wouldn't say it was in and it hooked up early or whatever it was. So he's got to pick this up to win by one. We don't want ties because then it's 15 spins and then they get 7.5 and it just messes up everything. But I'm going to watch him pick this up and then I'll finish the story about those fools. No. Skinny jeans over there for uh, Steve Bowen picking up a seven pin. And he picked it up right on his feet. Matt picked that one up right there. They win that by one second. Yes, exactly. Okay, so back to Lindy Lundin. Uh, he's from Duluth. He was on the PBA tour for a while way back. And the whole lot of he's got five CBA titles. But the one he let qualify on Saturday, it'll clear. Playing way out like that, right off the one board, and off of the gutter. And so we get back on Sunday, and it was after we had A squad bowl five games, B squad bowl five, A came back bowl five, B came back bowl five, so it took a long time to see other bowlers. Because back on Sunday, we take the top 24, Joe's first ball, 
right out by the channel of the pocket. Those fools, they left the one more dry again. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's where the those fools came from. And Johnny knows that because he knew Lindy also. Or the other thing we say it, see if there's a secret gutter shot out there. Yeah, we double secret gutter shot. So, and that's where I, actually where I played on the short pattern the first eight games yesterday. I had a pinned down Trident Odyssey, fairly shiny, that I used. I was playing right up five, or, and I'd get it out. To it would not go in the gutter. And I would try to throw it to the gutter about halfway down the lane, and it would go in the pocket almost every time. I struck a lot in the first set. Uh, I talked about it yesterday, somebody brought that up. Chris Harrison was a buddy of mine who grew up with the first real crank that we had around here with a black uh, hammer way back. And so, short oil days, before, before all the resin came out, he would say, I tried to throw the ball in the gutter halfway down the lane, and it would just look back to the pocket. So I was bringing that up yesterday. Try to throw it into the gutter halfway down the lane, and it go to the pocket. Straight nine count spares and then uh, uh, split eight one. And now a strike. The score was 234 for the bone ship and 191 for the corner of Adelaide. So that's uh, uh, 45. And they were 95th apart. But well, that's just going to be a good one. That's just going to be a good one. And all that matters is the team and the choice. They want to want to finish up. With his left hand, this pattern with left hand, so both of them play. We like the left hand better, or we like the left hand. Say they want to be with the left hand, we talk about the start to finish the match. Boy, your first game of the game, you need to be bold on that left hand, you get four by six points, you can pop with the brush right here. You don't have to wait for them to bowl the same frame. Now I'm moving on to 31 32. Find out what's going on. See where they're at. Yeah. Taylor picked up that 36910 like you saw. Uh, then Will struck, so we've got 105 in the fifth for corner Manaphy. Uh, we've got another split 8 1 on the bone shift team. So they are 93 in the sixth. That could give us uh, corner Manaphy potential 235 in the sixth. So a 42 pin. Difference and that was a double right there, so they are going to be 30, so it's going to be roughly a 40 ish uh, pin difference, and that's about what we had in the first match. This is actually the first game, so this is actually pretty much just all squared up here. Uh, strike by shift over there, that's just going to keep things even. There by Will. Yeah. Oh. They had a long pattern and just didn't have enough uh, back end down the lane. 8 10. Kind of puts uh, advantage back to Bone Scheffler. Uh, especially after that double, it does. Like I said, uh, after that second eight count, uh, chop or split, I should say. Bo and Schiffler were basically back to even after the 40 summit uh, pin advantage in game one. They kind of had given it back, and then now that double and then the 8 10 by Will definitely puts it back to Bo and Schiffler advantage. do 
here. Pretty good shot. Yep. Yeah, you knew he'd throw on that one pretty good. So that's a three banger for those guys. 127. They'll be in the 150s here in the eighth frame. Got a feed. Uh, corner are 152. So this definitely goes right back to about that 40 pin advantage for Jeff So they should maintain that third place seed. It looks like Corner Manatee will probably maintain that uh, four seed. Not sure what's going on. Can't see any score down there. Corbett's coming back here in a second. Which is a good thing, because I'm going to have to go get some scores put into the computer so we see how this shakes out. So I'll let Tom talk from here and let you know what's going on. Okay. So I just checked the scores. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So I good thing we're talking about how we pull in every other pair for every other game so the lanes didn't get totally fried and dried out here only bowled half the time a lot of them we do this we bowl all the games on the same pair the same say 12 pairs 12 lanes i mean uh they just get so everybody's in fifth arrow or deeper all the time whatever. so this probably helps have the lanes hold up a little better and we can't always do this Unless somebody gets, unless somebody gives us the uh, give out of lanes on a Sunday to do it. So that shot right there by John Pryor, obviously he was pumped up, and he does like to get himself excited. He bowls better when he's focused. Possible open by Matt Payne, and that might give those guys the number one seed. John Holmes right here needs this strike. If anyone, that'll be. Be huge with a strike. Oh, that's a five seven. You got the ten out though. Right? So move a couple boards left with your feet and throw the same shot. One pin match. Twenty four two twenty three. It was advantage home to prior for game one. So let's figure this out. Two thirty four match for Lemieux and Payne. And Johnny needs to at least get one. No, that's that just, uh, now you can actually go for it. But I still need to go for one. Make sure you don't lose that pin count. It'll be huge. That, that was a good play right there to go for that one. So they have 195 in mind. They're going to have one pin. Well, you can pick up the wash. Up. Could be a one pin match going into the 10th frame. Leave it up to Fire and Payne. A lot of excitement going here. The crowd is gathering behind us, watching what's going on. Real mad if you're coming over here to see. He wants to know who he's going to bowl because they are third, I believe. Really, really good spare shooting for Ben. So we could have a tie, not only for the game. If we don't have a tie for the game, we could have a tie for the matchup. 
but they would split that 20 bonus. This is huge. You're down to the 10th frame, one in the match. First game was one. Uh, well, you got one pin advantage over Pryor and Holmes. Not yet. He, that doesn't mean anything yet, so he's not going to get excited. Doesn't mean anything until he has it won. Not necessarily, because he's got to have them all. It's a huge strike by Matt. He has to have it. And, oh, the four pin they didn't trip. Yeah, I think he, it's almost like he bounced it, he got it in a hair, I think. Um, <laughs> I think he just got it in. So tilt, still not over. John Cryer, nine spare for 215, which is what you need strike. Obviously, he wins. One pin match. He might scream on this one if he gets a strike because, uh, like I said, the first one didn't matter. He didn't really scream, but he gave it the fist pump. Just enough to take the number one seat. But he played it not all. No, he did not. He did not take the number one seat, I don't think, yet. But 26 pins behind. Um, they're going to get it now because uh, yep, they're going to win by 12. Win by 12. So it's 1, it's 11, and they're down by 26. That's just enough. He and that's the first match by one pin. Right. He needs, uh, he needs the strike here to win uh, the total match, the total pins, and he'll get the number one seed. He didn't seem so excited now or whatever, but... Uh, well, the second one did it. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. Exactly. They like that second better and better. All right, 224 to 212. That was 12 pins. So yes, they want to get the John they Holmes and John Cryer get the number one seed. John Holmes trying to win his first CBA title. It would be awesome to see. He'd be the oldest guy to ever win his first CBA title. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, that's definitely right. And he also has the most Hall of Fame points without a title right now. John Holmes has that distinction. The most Hall of Fame points without having a title. We need a Hall of Fame points. So we get for the CBA Hall of Fame. You get, you oh, the CBA Hall of Fame. Oh, I thought you meant the regular Hall no. of Fame. I was gonna say, what points do they mean in that? <laughs> so I'm gonna shut the mic off here for a little bit as we get the rest of the scores, and we'll be back uh, before our uh, step letter starts. <laughs>
seat heading into the step ladder, team of Holmes Cryer. All right, you listen to Jason at, down there. Uh, they finished 5843. John Holmes, John Cryer at 5843. Yeah. The top three teams that I list, you guys can see. Second say place, Ben Lemieux, Matt Payne at 5786. Uh, second place, they're, second they're further seat, behind than I thought they would be. Team of Lemieux Payne. Uh, Bone, and Bone and Schiffler. Team of Bone Schiffler. So again, you three. Stay loose on 31 32. 31 32 is the practice warm up. Our first match will feature the Former number four seed. Taylor Corner and Bill Mattafee moving against the number five seed of David Langer. Fifth, so you really didn't change the first and second as far as the seeding for the step ladder. So the first match will feature the number four seed. Taylor Corner and Bill Mattafee moving against the number five seed of David Langer. So the first match will be Corner and Mattafee against Langer and Stearns, and they're going to be right here on 25.6. So we're going to, uh, we're going to move the camera over here, watch them warm up, the warm up here is 31.32, so um, we'll, uh, we'll let them, let them figure it out, and Corner and if get the choice if they want to start, if they want to let the other team start the match, because sometimes you want to start, you want to finish first, so, and you also sometimes want to be on the left lane, just because you can bowl faster, and uh, it's also if you like that lane better than the right lane, they are two different paths. Verna, see you're watching. I knew you'd be watching. Jeff Walter is watching. Hey, Mike Bischoff, I got to get hold of you. I got to talk to you sometime, so uh, I'll call you this week. Jake Green is watching. Jake, you should have had a partner. You should have been bowling here. Step ladder match. Uh, we're talking. Uh, Chad Nelson said he likes to pull the first one to keep pulling, keep moving, stay loose. But if you're maybe a, a little, say, I don't want to say lost, but they want to try something different, you might want to uh, you know, be in a practice pair and go for five minutes on it, whatever, and a couple extra shots, a couple extra bowling balls to use, and you might figure something out. Hey, that might be a better shot, a better ball to play this, this particular pattern. After a lot of different things go into this. I'm not sure what the right thing is to do. Everybody has their own ideas. If it works, then it would be the right idea. Hey, Bob Newbar is watching. I'm going to come up and watch you uh, watch the St. Michael Albertville bowling team which my grand nephew, Remington Filson, uh, bowls on. So I gotta get up and watch you guys practice tonight. And I also wanna get to watch the next match you have, so I gotta come up there and watch sometime. Dave Jones, well, I guess the only reason he didn't bowl is it was his anniversary this weekend. But he's watching this, so that's a good thing. Checking it. I'm, I'm going to sit down. My legs are getting a little sore standing up here. Oh, we got some tall chairs back here.
we'll round out the scores for you. Uh, Miller only really got out the top five because he's got to do the step out of the order. Things are great there. Brandon Brown walking by thinking, Jason, it's always good to hear you think if you do that because if you didn't run these tournaments, these guys would have nothing to do with it. And having something like this, this competition on your team makes everyone really like it. I'm talking about this in the first year of the season. Really, let's just give this game back to the and uh, Brady just a little bit too here in F46 in the fourth and it was all like starting with uh, so I'm gonna read this off again. Golden Cryer first, Lee and Payne second, Bowen and Shelton third. Werner Madison and Stern and Langer Stern still got the match going on right now. Fourth frame, first game, two game match. And that was a big mistake right there. Only get one on that. So we got Colin McCoy, so he's in definitely sixth place. The Howard Brothers, seventh. And your four time defending champions, Nick Wildman, Andy Mills, tenth. They, they struggled, they gave it their all the whole time. You can see them here, Moore and Shipworth. Round up the top 12. They made the crowd. A lot of uh, bullets. Put out. We got a tie game after, or one pin match after four frames. Open line on the screen. They need to move out. Something here. Close to a So, Brady, I was pretty sure he wanted to go high again. After he went to 4 9, he went to the whole 4 6 and over there. I'm sure he was trying to get to uh, that 4 7. But he was fine. So, let's see what uh, Brady has to say about this game. What do you think about this game? 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 What do you it's the same result. The ball's just not going through the pins, right, to get the six into the ten. And I can tell you, I would not be that deep at all. <laughs> brother. I am. He can do that. It won't be on the short pattern. Both of those guys that deep. I wonder if anybody can just play them pretty much straight up on the ten. I don't know who else did it today. I wasn't much different. Okay, this is not what we did tonight. I did that yesterday. It's just cool. I did it about four frames. Back to back times, I left them. And it's just. And so instead of thinking, which one I'm going to do say, don't resist it. Instead of saying, stand here, this is the target that they got. And I get up and move on. Move on, yes. Um, it should be the easiest pin because you can get it on the But it's a little bit different of a release thing. It's not just five minutes in a deep pin because you can't resist it. Something to carry that down.
This is a huge strike right here for three. You just get the extra pins. You have to win eight, they could have an 18 pin lead. And we all know how sometimes 18 pins is hard to, uh, it's hard to make up. It's harder to make up that than eight pins. Right. I'm trying to say that I couldn't get it off the line. Uh, now he carries that one. Always in my left. Yeah. Always, always in the levels, no matter what. So, well, 162. Not what they wanted to do. Finished out, you know, pretty well. A solid nine. Might have only made one kid difference. He might not have got the second one, but still, the fact they didn't carry that one. Not a good shot, right? Correct. So, it was great to do right here. So, we just want to let up and get six or seven. Lose that opportunity to have an 18 pin lead. So David Langer is going to not wait for anybody. Let's go. That's what he's going to say. Let's get started right away. And he's going to put some pressure on that team. He's going to want to just break. Keep going. Carl Campa watching some work. Of course, that's because look at the Okay, how about this one for Lumpy? Oh, see a little soft. Maybe a little soft goal or something where the ball is back. I don't know. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. You know, turns out, right. You know, it turns out. Yeah, sure. You carry. I <laughs> But we all know bowling. There are way more breaks in bowling 
for the people that don't say they got And so you leave that solid eight, that solid nine up there, and you say, oh, I have bad break. Yeah, well, okay, you can just rock this other one. But did you really feel like that? Did you spit it? Did you do this? Did you do that? People don't call that break. You gotta know who's gonna do that. Because he's good. Jerry Hitman. Thanks for seeing you on Friday. Hope everything's going well for you. Maybe he did. Maybe the ball just looked good downstairs. It looked like. All right. Brady comes right here. Putting the double up on the board right away would be huge. Uh-uh. Could be the form. Could be the team. 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 You gotta complete the wall at the right point, obviously. Yeah, the grill, and then we'll give it a more yeah, look, look at it more. The first shot's always get to do that practice on it. And you were, so you know what? Uh, you were were not in that lane for the first game, so this is a whole another game. Put college kid, three goals out there, or whatever. Uh, so just get one of them, Brady. You want to do on a mic for them, don't give away the pins. And we talked about the six ten or three six ten is more top more ways than just a six ten. So sure we will. We just so looks a little old. Perfect. That's where he's supposed to be. All the time. Yep. We get down over to 31, all of a sudden, we want, books through the middle, books through the middle. We have like four of the first five in the frames. Oh, and you get it? No. Very good. Good attempt at that. But I didn't, we were wondering what's going on now. Where? Who was, who was what? I didn't think of a college kid, but I knew somebody doing something else. That's at a great point to do that, yes. Okay, Brady, see if you made a little adjustment to what you did for light. So that's a good zone right there. If he's any higher, he's even a dead man. Uh, so a light swisher. It looks like that's what Brady should be playing on that lane. Okay, exactly. Very, very solid. And he's been here multiple times. 18 times here in the CBA competition. And up to 18 titles. Six of them are gone, so he knows what to do. I mean, he's won I think, a few times, obviously. Snaps out the 10 right there, that's pretty good. You talked about the Masters titles he has, which Minneapolis Masters, St. Paul Masters, and Minnesota Masters. Minnesota Masters. Minnesota Masters. Minnesota Masters. Yeah. Now he can bowl the senior one. Yeah. It's all not fair. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not fair. See if Taylor can come through here with a double, and he did, so got to keep putting that pressure on him even though they're down by 14 pins. So it's basically 32 pins they're down, but they got the first drag, now they got a double, and if uh, the other team falters a little, they have a little bit of incentive, a little bit of, um, not incentive, but a little bit of excitement going on. Brady can put a little bit of pressure on him, but he just keeps striking. If they keep striking, they can't lose. So that should be a light swisher. Oh no, it's high solid plus. Maybe it wasn't a light swisher, but uh, I don't know. That was really good. Looking at that replay, and I'm glad it wasn't like that.
solid flush. David Langer right there. Oh, that was uh, that was perfect. Sorry for switching all those lanes. I was just seeing if there were any cameras. They're all turned up. So. Oh, there's a. And the half ten. And this could just about be over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he bowled with John Boss. I know they had a they had a good game to the roll there. I'm not sure where they are. Okay. All right. Well, good. Uh, okay. Brady Stearns. He's going to throw this one. Really good. He was really high flush last time. He was trying to throw that he had a right switch. Just inside a fourth arrow. And kind of like half can over kind of thing, whatever. That's just soft hand and the pin just rolls. Well, you roll the ball like that all the time. If you hit up on it and try to grab it and try to like fit it in there, then you're going to leave something people want or something like most people could, certain people would like it. Pins don't. Well, pretty much over for the Manaphee uh, corner duel, so nice uh, fifth place finish. So where are we going to the next match here? Solid eight for lunch if we got the eight. Good spot. We're going 27, 28 for the next match. Have 220. Like I said, good showing. Step letter didn't start out the way they wanted it to. They came back, still had a chance, but it uh, wasn't meant to be when your opponents throw a six bagger at you. We get back to this pair. I'm not sure if we're going to get back to this pair or not. I'm not sure where uh, the next two matches are. Or next two matches. Uh, the next one is 27, 28, but I don't know where the next two after that are going to be yet. But so we're going to have Stearns, Langer are going to be bowling again. Bowling and Schiffler. They'll be over on 27 and 28. The camera over. Uh, they both get two practice shots on each lane, and Bowling and Schiffler get the choice. Uh, if they want to start, or let the other team start the match on the left lane. Will shaking his head, but all of a sudden now it's easy. But it is funny how that is. You have to stay focused and you stay, uh, I don't want to say tight, but you want to just like throw it too good maybe. And uh, But then now you just loosen up and let it go and then it gets right. Brady. Trying out a different ball right here for the count ball. Let's see if he gets back on here what it's going to be like. Why didn't he use that one before? That one looked really good. But every time you take out a new ball, it seems like you strike all the time. All right, nice tournament, Will. Fifth place finish. Will had three CBA tournaments won last year, three singles tournaments. Also won the most money, the John Gales Award for the most money won in CBA competition for this past season. All change over here to 27 28. All right, got that as they're warming up. So you know, Schiffler's older than me if he wins. Good point. Johnny Holmes was going to tell me that uh, uh, 
Uh, first of all, Dave Morrison was the oldest person to win his first CBA title. I always said John Holmes would beat that. He would be the oldest person to win his first CBA title. But now, Johnny has come to tell me that Craig Schiffler is older than Johnny, so he would be the oldest man to win his first CBA title. But John Holmes is not going to let that happen. Pryor's not going to. Pryor's not going to let that happen either. Good choice. And so then. Good call on the wings there. They're just boneless wings. They're just a bunch of chicken legs. Like, they're just a bunch of chicken all ground up together in the deep fry. Those are nothing more than nuggets. They're just nuggets. Oh. So anyway, get get back to that. I said it earlier, but to say it again. So John Holmes right now also is the has the most Hall of Fame points without a title. And if he happened to win here, the next person in line is Mark Steiner, who has the most Hall of Fame points without winning a title. And is he even ball? He doesn't bowl CBAs anymore. But if John wins this, then John Holmes, then I actually have more Hall of Fame points by only winning a doubles title than John Holmes will have. <laughs> well, there's a lot of factoids going on much, here. You got too much thinking going on. There. I do. <laughs> well, when I go through all the stats and I look at all the stuff, all the years of history that I have written down, this stuff pops out. And I used to do a lot of these factoids. Like the one factoid I'll bring up the one we talked about last month, uh, Zach Andrews, the only junior bowler to ever, he's youngest bowler to ever win a CBA title, and the only youth bowler. But there was a step letter match in that tournament that he won that Zach Andrews and bowled against myself. And there was 49 years and nine months difference in age, which is the most age difference of any step ladder match ever. And you let him win. And I let him win. I didn't let him, first of all. He took, I had, I he had took no you. chance. <laughs> There's no but, letting anything, right? But I didn't let <laughs> But I didn't let Will Matafee beat me, by the way. Because Will Matafee has never beat me in a step ladder or a match. He, he can't, can't beat you. He can't. He couldn't beat you in any match. No. He couldn't even beat me at Flaherty's last year when we bowled uh, <laughs> just in the league. <laughs> Which I had a joke about with him. I'm going to bring this up because we're we'll talking about it right now. So we're bowling the second set of Flaherty's in our summer league. Three games, and then the Bears and well, there are three games, and you know I'm obviously able to punt the ball up second or third or whatever, and I'm throwing the ball and striking it like seven or something. Will's inside, third, fourth, fifth, or deeper. You know, I like 230, 250. He's got about two or whatever. And then the third game. He finally moves way right. I just moved 24 right. And I go, yeah, this is something. First of all, I watched him do that. And, and he said, uh, also, I said, you grew up listening to John Easton. John Easton, what would he say? Why didn't you think of doing that too? Pay okay, attention. So he knows that. I'm just giving Will a bunch of crap. I'm kidding right now. But it was just kind of funny. Now, you can. And now I don't know if he, I shouldn't say that anymore. I don't have to because he will bring it up. <laughs> there will be a time, and first of all, he makes a way more cut than I do. I don't bowl with him, man, because I'm not there and not doing it or whatever. But, but I will go back. The first time I ever bowled Will in a step out of match was at Texataka, I don't know, five, six years ago. And I needed to get the second strike and then defeat him. Just, not step letter, but just in the match. And I struck, and he was clapping. And I go, and the only thing he clapping is for me to get a strike with the guy that I'm bowling with. So I just knew he was just a nice guy, cheer for everybody. He grew up at Country Club, like a guy so he had to be that kind of guy. So I still say that a lot of people. He was a nice guy. I don't think he's a nice guy. And Jack Madison is watching. Jack, it was, it was good to see you bowling yesterday. It was. So anyway, we were starting out the match here, and Bowen and Schiffler are going to have... Uh, well, what are they going to do? No, they're going to start on the left lane. This is the lane the Again, I just don't know why. See, now, maybe because I know more about what feeds the puppy, but I know he likes to be on the left lane, and he's going to put the right and put the front lane. They got that six They got two behind. They were right behind already, and they were two behind. Yep. Look, first strike dropped in right up the big wall of China and struck. Instead of going high, like all the people have done. Turn around like you tried to do that. He'll spin it. Yes. More, more than anybody else right now on this, on this pair. So, I'm not surprised that he missed in it. <laughs> exactly. And don't target yeah. her path. And I'm not sure how much that draw the oil. Right. 
sure how many step ladders Craig took in Single slides may be one, I don't know. Doubles may be another. So I don't know how many times he's been in the CBA step ladder. MSCs, he's won a couple of them, I think, for sure. CBA wise, though, I don't, I'm not sure. I can look that up. Actually, you could look that up. Uh, last year's doubles, which we have all those here. If you didn't keep this in the same order I gave it, I'll figure it out. So we want to. Uh, Back of uh, nine, uh, so uh, no, they were not in the step ladder last year. They didn't even pass last year. So maybe oh, they did the bonus season. So it's probably so, a couple years. Yeah, I'm not, so I'm not really sure if they ever actually do make the two. They might pull well. Uh, and then we had that uh, split, split conversion by Steve Bone, and then after a double. Might be going through the nose for a split. So. Is that better? If we're dead. <laughs> so, okay, this kind of plays into, into my thinking on this pattern. You want to be high for off your hand without having it go to the nose on this left leg. You want to bring it all the side away. And you get out a little like you get that jet for guys like X, like Schiffler and me, he's more of a So he's, uh, they're changing balls, they're changing thumb slots. Okay. Went now to use that spare ball for a while. Kind of odd that he didn't change right there. Either way, pick it up. He should do this. He's a veteran. All over it, skinny kind of. All right, so we got a uh, four-pin match right here in the third frame. You did mention earlier that he's got four cutters. He's been filing a down in the shots. Ah. So he's got a five-year that I said, I don't want to necessarily have to you know, cut it out because it's your bowling hand. It's yeah. going to take you out. So anyways, you see him come back. He's constantly messing with it. Okay. So I don't know how much that might be. Very cool, very cool. So you have anything, make you move it, a little bit, whatever it is. Uh, so you have like a, say it's you know, your knees hurting, your leg, or whatever, you, you, you slide in it, it's just got a little pain, you clinch, you know, the same way. So as we all get older, we give them like some pain. I don't think you get them to turn on the baseball game on one of these TVs up here. Philadelphia gets San Diego. Well, they'll get a chance to win to get to the World Series against possibly Houston. Eagles versus Chargers. Yeah, but I word Philly versus Padres. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a baseball fan. I like football too, but I don't know why, why are we baseball. Why we watching the Green Bay game? It's on. That's a good point. The Vikings don't play this weekend. Right. Snapped out to ten that time. That was very good shot. So you got a double for those guys. Uh, four, 14 pin lead right now. With that double. Throw it better. Or maybe move. Probably move a little bit. I still think the plane in the field is going to be They're going to hang on get close on this game and they're going to walk over the next one. Unless, of course, they really like this. They can shoot 260. Well, they can't shoot 260. Yeah, well, they can. Oh, yeah. They, they have to do stairs. So, well, then that's yeah, yeah. But if you really like that lane, I, don't know, I still think you'd want to. Well, that's the seven. The seven, that possibly. Oh, no. All right, we'll see if Craig does this time. The last one is really good. Justin Sun made the match play two to lock with uh, Clayton Moore. High plus, you have to see that. was high plus right at the arrow, right up the hand. And it's not going to go high because it's going to hit that great ball. It was like his first one, but he didn't drop it. Correct. He actually hit it when he should. 
got it in the same spot. I mean, he left that tempo and the one that he kind of got out of the world. This is going to be a big uh, deficit if he doesn't, if Brady doesn't pick this up and try to keep this match close. They're going to have to get two or three in a row here because they could go 269, 269. Yes, that would be a. Uh, and he opens there, so 36, 221 max. They could be a 48-pin deficit. So what they got to do is cut that 48-pin down. Right. Yes. And if I was, I would have just gone up there. Now, I'm not sure if he knows he's doing that. I'm trying to be polite, or maybe it's just really one of the teams that didn't want to get that button. Because the team on the left is not half the way. And they're still a frame ahead of them anyway. So that's about 13. That's great puck at the pocket. So the rule of 41. 48 to the And if they want to 17, you want to ball comes off the pad, you want to be at 17. With the 17, that's the pocket. That's a high move that right there. And then he leaves the, the seven eight after the two seven. So. So yeah, two fifty. Okay. So what I'm thinking with with the uh, Langer Springs are doing is they're trying to mess up the lane for when Strip is over there. I think they. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I'm kidding on that because. Uh, <laughs> just because they they're going to show them on top of it. So see, we can't. Get it. either going to be a 75 or 65 pin point. 65 is a lot of pins they have to make up, but not yeah, yeah. And <laughs> there is so, yeah. you're going to need 
Well, I saw David and Dan Langer do something like this years ago at uh, Treasure Island. They were down by a lot like that. They had like two seventy last game. Uh, Matt Matt was over and looked he's not going to give up and go back to back over. For sure. So, well, you would. Right. Yeah. Correct. Tyler Ajax is watching. He just did his first 50k match a couple weeks ago. Yeah. 50k. And you know, he raised his snakes. So he had the snakes chase him the whole time before he finished it. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine raising snakes in No, me neither. 75 pins. Exactly. Okay. Let our team go. We need two points. Need this strike first. And see? <laughs> but once you start counting that, you lose focus on the task at hand, which is still the ball in the score. It's just going to add up. See what Craig does on that one. It's all because uh, it's got to be out for her, so that's a different matter. And the 10th thing, which seems to be a lot of tension now in that right lane. He's going to keep it in the pocket, just like John Owens. He's going to keep it in the pocket, just like that. Steve? Correct. Don't have to go left. Yep. I was bowling with a young man yesterday. He was from Centurion, uh, Wisconsin, and who hooked the ball tremendously. Really hit it. I really got after it. Uh, oh, yes. Terry does. Bucket slasher or whatever. It's good for them for good for a double. But anyway, so he was playing the purple for a long term on, on the short pad in the fourth game. And talked to him afterwards. They were doing that on the, on the, the long pad or two later on, whatever. So I tried to just explain to him. He said, he said, I wasn't saying anything. Well, this is my seventh one of these and I haven't cast yet. I go, no, seventh CBA tournament. And I haven't cast yet. Well, how can I tell you something? Oh, well, he didn't like that. Yeah, kind of ball said he lost it. Um, but I wanted to tell you know, this game, today's game, you want to play the game more front to front. Yeah. You're playing this game so left to right that you can possibly get the ball to square up at the same spot all the time on these type of things. Right. Right. Yes, For you can sure. do that, whatever, no problem. It's going to hook back to that. So and he was saying, well, I don't know about what bowling balls or layouts you can have. You know, that's what I do with any of the time. He said, well, I got 26 balls. And I'm trying to find the right one. I go, well, you've got to find something. Different hand release. If you want to be competitive and come out here, you need to do that. I'm yeah. hoping he took that to heart. I'm not a coach, but I, so you know he'll learn something. You know, he'll find something he wants to do. Yeah. I know we were talking about uh, him. He can pull the king of the hills. Uh, okay. Score patterns this summer. Uh, so I started a, a eight week king of the hills. At Southway at Bowl in St. Cloud. Yep. And uh, he came to probably over half of them down here. And his dad did. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, if nothing else, I guess what that tells me is he is committed to trying to become a big bowler because he's not just bowling on. Okay, right. right. He's going down and trying to bowl on okay. sport patterns to make himself better. So, I would think he probably did take the hurt on the side of the crossing because. It's good to know. I yeah. wasn't sure. And I didn't, I didn't know how many CPs both had seen uh, Him and his dad both the double yeah. yesterday. And I had, I had met his dad before. Uh, Johnny Holmes had been pretty cool once before, so sure. I kind of knew who he was. Uh, and then it, so we bowled all day with them. They were really nice. They were trying hard. And, yep. you know, here in the house, they both the bus. And, I can kind of, okay, what I do, I talk to him. 
Um, what do I'll do in the summer at Flaherty to try something a little bit different, maybe a second set, whatever, compared to our Friday night or whatever. And I would play out and do that. He said, why do you do that? And I go, I just try to shovel it. I don't want to hit it on stage because I just shovel the ball down to wherever I get to let the lane take it. Okay, I can't do that playing in because it's going to be terrible. Okay, right. so I don't have that. He's still kind of the open hand. Right. I, I don't know. He's got his, whatever he does. Right. Well, I think that's about it for this uh, match right here. Yeah. So it's going to be Bowen and Schiffler against Matt Bain and Ben Lemieux. They're just gonna kind of go through the motion now to finish out this game, and we'll, uh, we'll see who makes uh, the left lane. I think it's the, I think the higher scores are on the left lane, so whoever makes the, the right choices or adjustments on the right lane to keep it from shooting 150 or 60 has best chance. And so, you know, you lose a little bit of focus because you got the game one, you don't try as hard. Um, but you have to keep that focus, too. You do. It's not over. It, it's also not over for the next match, either. Right. So, if you're not focused, you let up. Just because you got a match, that mindset has to stay going. I agree. Well, you know, mathematically, it's not over. They opened up. Not yeah, not a strike on the board yet, so they didn't just do well, a bunch of And if they go up the sheet, for, yeah. so it's not over mathematically. The split didn't help, but it was over mathematically now. <laughs> Because his light switcher, instead of a solid strike, light swisher to the nose. Another good showing, I believe they were second last year? I can't remember. during the match, yes. Something happened yes, and I, it was like a, an old moment. And I, I mean, this was like, yeah, that was it, and it's a pin. I think it was late. I think we're back and watch the video. We're going to have to. Yeah, I think it happened late. It was like, oh my God, that's it. I, I think we didn't know what to say. Yeah. It might have been where Andy picked up like a, something, maybe it was a, it might have been like a 2 4 or something, or two, five, I don't know, what else I don't know, I picked up. Now Brady, solid flush strike there. I do have to say, there's a Twin City senior tournament. 
the men's and I believe there's a men's and a, I'm not sure the women's, but there's also a mixed. Yeah. And so my, one of my locker guys, uh, my brother, my wife, that David gave, and uh, it was uh, Gary Sigerson, which was my sister like Gail's brother. And I came in the other part, but they won last night. Nice. And it was up at Sundance and Super Bowl. Okay. So the locker guy came in one. I don't know. I thought it was good. That is true. So we're going over to lanes 23 and 24. I'll move this uh, camera over there. And then we'll go take two shots on each lane. As Steve is just finishing up, holding Shammy in one hand, ball in the other, 208 to 191 for that game. They, uh, they won easily, handily, whatever the word is, but that's still a nice showing for Langer. Uh, fourth place finish is still good. When Jason said that, uh, as he said, said the locker guy won the senior tournament in his division. He was talking about me. I don't want to say that, but I got a, I couldn't go to the national in uh, Vegas that year uh, because it was in August. I'm very busy August wise. The business schools doing all the lock and stuff, so I couldn't go. Uh, but I did get a shirt. So that was kind of cool. And Jason won his age bracket too, because I think it goes 50 to 54, 50 to 59, five years, so forth like that. And uh, Jason won his division too for that. And we were like second or third, double wise. I was just talking about the senior term that you touched on right before you left. But you said, I won my division, you won your division, and we were second or third in the... Uh, in, our, uh, in the doubles. In the doubles, yeah. Oh, that was a really good tournament. I'll have to try that again. Just that yeah, somebody just done it up with the weekend. No, we need to have like a 62. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Will. Good tournament again. We'll see you next month. Next month, Dr. Guy Fuller of the Decades, number two. Oh, yeah, I like it. That's that park roll. Second uh, swing or second leg. Second leg. Well, I will have the uh, results before that. Uh, you, uh, you are. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, leading mine too. So sweet because uh, the only other uh, 60 and older uh, well, part right behind me. If you want to win the 60 year old and over, you got to go too far. Exactly. But I'm ahead of him. So better than behind you. Exactly. I got a two point lead. On. Then if John Holmes is four points behind me, I believe. There's only like four or five or six year olds who go regularly on the CBA tour. I think they like their shirts that these guys are wearing. They are South Wave Gold North Stars. I like it. And the red black. I like red, red black, red gray black. I like that combination. I like the fact, I do like the North Stars uh, team name. I thought they were just about that. I put that in his ear because everybody, and so the Blues, Minnesota Blues, we started talking, start talking about the Farmington North Stars, the old Farmington, which is now South Bay, I'll explain. Uh, Rod Top started the Minnesota Blues back in the 80s. And it was Danny and Jimmy Top were on the team, along with uh, George Peterson and Tom Barthel. Was a fan. Yeah. And so Eric Shot is obviously Denny's son. And so they were sponsored by this team or that team. I don't know. So we set our team called the Lakers. We are called Twin City Lakers because we were from Twin City. We have people from Minneapolis and St. Paul. And then after a few years, we got Lynn's sponsor. We still called ourselves the Lynn's Lakers. We always had the name the Lakers. They always had the name the Lakers. Well, that was a lot of teams sponsored by whether it's Brunswick or this or that. But they don't have a name. So then they would get a different sponsor. Well, who's that team? Who's that team? So when I was talking to Eric about that, come up with a name. And if you have different sponsors, you can always put that name in with it. North Stars fits because that's an old, old hockey, Minnesota hockey uh, with old Exactly, yeah. The Willow, uh, no. But it's like some chrysanthemum. No, it's 
something little green. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, anyway. Lady flower. See? Oh, yeah, we have the spikes and principles. I used to live on the I can't believe that anymore. So we have Justin Schiffler, who was a. No, not vice principal. Yeah. Assistant principal at a Pleasant yeah. School. Yeah. But, um, he's a teacher. Oh. So uh, he's doing, he's, uh, they need somebody to fill in, so he's filling in for a year to get a little bit of experience as an assistant principal. He can go back to teaching and, you know, maybe down the road he can principal somewhere. Like our old Tracy Mankinson, who was a principal at the school. Nice turn on the Fourth place is worse than last year, but you're supposed to get better, but I don't know what happened. Uh, I'll, expl I'll explain what uh, David Langer just said in case you didn't hear that. Brady Stearns is bowling with Lumpy. They bowled for about four or five years in a row here now, whatever. And Brady says to Lumpy, I'd like to get you one of these titles. And he goes, Lumpy goes, I have six. We need to get you one. Yeah. <laughs> so here we got uh, the Payne Lemieux duo gets a choice. I wonder what they're going to do. So, Matt's going, uh, who wants to start the match? He's got to get his partner over there to decide what they should do. Then the news is up at the desk. Okay, well, he's supposed to be bowling. they got to get away from him. He's not in a hurry. He needs to hydrate. Yeah, I agree. You need to hydrate. Can't cram. <laughs> there is that. Oh, man. That can happen. Oh, no. Oh, he's hydrated. Well, who's starting on that plane? I think he said you guys start on that plane. See, no, that happened. You should do, I think. But it worked out well for Bowling and Jeff and Last match, yep. Yeah. So they're going to let Bowling and Jeff start on the lane that they technically like better, I'm thinking now, because um, because they uh, you both kind of pipe it up that wall or right. whatever, and it's not going to go high. And, you, know, you hope they carry out that town. But if they fall, they're not going to have a good stuff in the way. Right, right. So they've got an auto line. Maybe a different, a little different disadvantage angle line. Yeah, so this one we don't have a score on. We'll have that next by next one. Right, so we'll have to keep you updated. Yeah, we'll let you know where the score is at on this one. So when, uh, on the James, flip side, nice full screen for people. So nice there's that too. Nice big yeah. Uh, which Jay's is talking about it. So he has uh, four, he has eight cameras uh, for four lanes set up, and one's on the stores and one's on the lanes. And one of the new cameras, one of the new cameras he has, uh, does not working right now on the score. So we decided to have it on the lane rather than the store. And we'll just tell you what's going on. The uh, best we can, we'll try to keep you, with our mathematical skills, we'll try to keep you posted. You know, I grew up in Northeast Minneapolis, and I had some high school math. Sometimes it's not the best. You got somebody cheering for Payne and Lemieux. That'd be Steve Nava. Must be a teammate of theirs. So Lemieux, uh, bad bandwidth came. It was a, it was a bad bandwidth. Yes. Yep. Well, I'm not very good at this. I, there's a lot that happens during the step ladder. We didn't have pictures. For we want pictures of the top three teams for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get this after this. The other two That's okay. Us. We'll try to find something. We'll find something, find something in the yeah. past. Yeah. Because, well, we've got to let the in, in, uh, in green and some pictures. No, we're just going to have to take the top three. Yeah. I forgot about the pictures also. There needs to be a lot going on when that is one thing with the live stream, though. They're all. Saved on the Facebook uh, web our page, so you can't always go back and see it. I mean, we like to take the pictures to put in our publications and that, but everybody can obviously watch the matches back. You can go back and watch all of them. Yeah, that's a good thing. So here we'll fill you in on uh, the, the what's going on here. Ben, then you opened the first frame, and then uh, Matt Payne just uh, barely spared there. Uh, so that's the second frame. And Schiffler will strike, bone nine spare. Schiffler leaving the four pin right there. So, uh, that's a, so we have strike spare spare. 39 to second. 
We're going Fiffler. Could be 20. It could be about a 2 a 10 pin. Oh, pins are falling all over the place over there on the left lane. Good shot, Steve. You're afraid of him already. I mentioned about the score screen. We don't have it because the camera is off on that one. So we have to fill it in, fill you in on what's going on. So we'll continue to do that. Yesterday. I'll have to run back. I didn't see him hold that in the butt. Okay. Those bowlers at home should be cheery. Or a big carryover for next year. Exactly. Yeah. You want to get a big pull? Oh, shit. One left already. That's right there. No. Did he already? No. I'm actually a counselor. So that's, I'm going to fill you up and fill you in on the scores here. So, Bone Silver one strikes, Fair Spare, Turkey, and Lemieux and Payne went uh, open, Spare, Spare, and uh, Spare right there for uh, Matt in the fourth frame. So, there's a foul right now on a 30 pin lead for these guys on that left lane. And they like that lane better, but they need to look. Just because uh, the way they both play, hard up and at them on that lane. Don't give the pocket away. They need to leave a 10 pin or a strike. And like I mentioned, you should be able to pick up those 10 pins. So a lot of people are going to also have to know that what's the doubles tournament, everything is truly just double as much as it costs. Right. And the trophy is so So next month you're going to start high no matter what. Dave, the scoreboard uh, is, the scores are off as far as the camera. We have a little issue with the camera on that lane, so that's why we're not showing the scores. We're trying to keep it filled in of what's going on. Another 10 pin by Matt Payne. Had a little trouble carrying in that right lane, but they got 84 in the fifth. And uh, Owen Schiffler, 138 in the sixth, 157 in the seventh, with a spare up in the eighth. But they're ahead a couple frames. But they're ahead quite a bit of pins right now.
I know you can probably barely hear Jason and Steve because he was kind of in the back. Rich Holmes took his seat over here next to us, and uh, Jason was talking from further back. So you probably couldn't hear him, a couple things that he said. Um, we were talking about the Betcha win being uh, almost, just about $2,500, something like that. So you know, going and simply win the tournament, that's all $2,500 gets carried over to next month. Because they're not in, but the other two teams are in the Betcha win. And somehow or another, Ben Lemieux and Matt Fee need to start striking. So Ben needs to start right here in the seventh frame. Needs it. And he did. So it gives them 104 in the sixth, which means uh, they are down uh, 34 pins in that sixth frame already. But they can cut 10 pins off of that with a strike here by Matt in the eighth. Craig up in the ninth frame. They're, they're a frame ahead. Carries out that strike. They could go for 237 and 224 max for Matt and Matt, but they're only in the eighth frame. Double here is huge. Needs it. Stay as close as possible. That right lane is definitely the tougher lane. What do you say, Matt? No, he, oh, he carried that. Nice. Nice lucky carry. He doesn't know how he did it. We don't know how he did it because he was standing in the way, but the double is a double. Steve Bone leaving at six pin. That just cuts into that lead, so uh, or cuts into the amount of pins they're going to lead by. Or they might not even be leading. So this is a uh, way closer match. Way, way better match. Or wait, Colton, I should say. I don't know if they better than the last one. Um, Steve will pick this up and get nine or strike or something like that. So they're going to have about 215, 16. It is. Oh, that would have been really nice to carry that one. But pick it up, though. Get the 200. Steve using that old burgundy hammer. Still with the original grips. He drilled it 45 years ago for his spares. Well, we were talking about it yesterday that they're hard as a rock, those grips, and you think he doesn't want to try to take them off and they're going to crack. Leave it solidly in that ball. Yeah. Ben wants to spare for Ben to keep this as close as possible. Nope. 61, 61, the max they're going to have 191. 217 max with Steve, so it could be 26 pins or more. Deficit is, so he's got to cut it to 16. I know it. He can't cut it to 16. Could be a 36 pin match if he doesn't double. That would like he meant it. Gain these 10 pins. He just needs the 10. Being down 26 is better than being down 36. Matt Payne can throw the ball hard, as Rich Holmes just says. So they're gonna have 181 to 217. 36 pin deficit. Now we get to the lane, which I think is the higher scoring lane of the two. The bad thing is, uh, you know, you, you try to you want to try to keep that match close. They had two opens on the right lane. Ben had those two opens, which was uh, uh, you know, mistakes, obviously. He didn't, he didn't miss on my purpose. And the other team stayed clean. So, but that left lane should be higher scored. Uh, I think Matt's going to have a real good look. Ben throws the ball a little bit slower. Has to circle a little bit. Has to go a little bit more left to right. So I'm not sure if he can play up that wall as easily as, say, Craig Sippler did on that lane, or Matt's going to.
first shot here has got to be good. <coughs> got to put some pressure on right away. <coughs> oh, there's a well tap ten. So a little bit more left to right on that. So it wasn't up at the pocket as much as I thought <coughs> that I would play or the other guys right handers are playing. But. Matt can make this into a double. Oh, he left the forfeit. But he's playing it right up at him like he should on that uh, on that great wall of China pattern. He's going to leave the seven pin, so he's chuckling. I'm not sure if he threw that one very well or. Um, Ball, and of course, I don't think he's one of those guys where he throws the ball and, he, and you hear the ball hit the back. I think somebody missed a single pin. You look up and you go, Steve missed that ball. That never happens. All right, see if Ben can uh, strike again. He can that love tap 10 first. <laughs> that or not. So they actually have a three pin match here along with the 36 pins. So they got 39 pin lead right now. And that was kind of like, that was a half seven right there for Steve. It was a solid seven last night. But you know, they keep doing that, they have two hundred. <laughs> That's true, their team would need two for the seven. And they're not on that pace yet. So you left the four pin last time, and I'm not sure if you moved in, swung it more. Either way, it went higher for the four nine. So that's just devastating when you think you make the right pattern, the right shot on that pattern, and it just doesn't work. Well, you got to go for this. You got to pick up this four nine. get without picking up. 63 in the fourth for Payne Lemieux. We'll be down 17 plus the, the 53 pins are down. There's only six frames to go. Correct. And so the straighter, Craig is playing straighter, I think, than Matt is. And that's a, uh, of course, it's a different lane, different pattern. But he knocked out the four and only left the nine. So he can both of them. Somewhere. Fifth frame is a good time to strike. Ain't over. Still so mathematically, mathematically done. What would you do there? You didn't hear about it? You don't know the Yogi Bear I don't know what he'd say. I'm trying to think what he would say here. But like, no, no, no. I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of a phrase that. I'm, that was a question. <laughs> okay. 
And I still can't believe that Matt Payne is not throwing the ball in the pocket. That's a little odd to me that he's had to make that adjustment there, but um, the way it is. So a very tough goal like this right now. Oh. Okay, well, the big four had it. That was after a solid seven, light seven. And it's like anybody, you can kind of get more on it, go slower, hit it more, whatever, and you go on. So Matt has to pick this up. He broke up the split. Let's pick up the square. Goes with the ball, just like he's supposed to. All right, and it's going okay. Now go over the All right, so this will give me uh, gives us 103 in the sixth for Schiffler and Bone. With a strike here for Ben, they'll have 103 in the sixth. So we got four frames to go, and they're down to 36 pins up here behind after the first game. So it's not over yet. And you know those bowlers, it's not over. Must strike, no, must strike here. Don't care how must strike. Matt Payne has to figure some out now. He went four pin four nine and then high for three six. Would Randy Shave? Randy Shave. Randy Peterson say, what would he what should he do? I would say he has to move in deeper and find that high wall and keep it in there. And either dead ten or strike. He's got to get the high. He's thinking about it. You know it's going to be hard. It was so quiet in here, you couldn't hear a pin drop. Oh! Carries out the end of the That's what I'm saying. I said, one way or another, he had to not go high and leave a dead pen. Steve has to come back. He's having a little struggling on that right lane. He broke up the split that time. That's another key thing. He broke up the split. And this is choppable or missable. Because missable is the same as choppable, but you can miss it other than chopping it. So, not a given thing. Must strike for Ben on the left lane or left no chance. Throw the last two really well. Flash around there. Okay, it's set up. So 223 is what they can strike out the half. Bone picks that up. So they have 123 in the seventh to 133 in the seventh with a double up for Payne and Lemieux. So 203 max, but actually going at a 180 pace. So if he doesn't strike. Yeah, bye. If he doesn't strike right here, but Craig does not strike, and Matt strikes, we might have a winner on the main review side. Just a must strike. You can't even get a pin drop it. How is it? The 4-9 just carried the 8-10. Wow. Unbelievable bad carry. He had two 4 nine in that game. So now all of a sudden it gets a little bit looser arm swing. Another Craig. Not that he would have been told there were anyway, but it's a lot looser arm swing. Even Jason Belmonte said this one time, because when you're bowling a match and you make the other guy finish last, he goes, I don't care who you are, you have to attempt to use right, you throw it differently. Just do it. Yep. So unfortunate break for that 249 that Matt had, 187. Uh, they had a chance, he strikes. They could have pulled it out. <laughs> Especially after Steve leaves that 7 9, 170, 17 pins, he won by 20. Unbelievable. So, Steve did not like the right lane. They both liked the left lane. So now they're moving over to both John Holmes and John Cryer to be taking on teammates Steve Bone and Craig Schiffler in the title match. 
And you got to believe that Holmes and Pryor are watching of who's got the better shot of that lane, and they are going to make Bone and Schiffler finish on the right lane. That would be my thought process on that. We'll see it, Rich. <laughs> I don't know everything about bowling, but uh, that's what I would do. Um, I'm not sure what that's pair we're on. I gotta find. I gotta make sure I know what pair that's going on for this. If it's gonna be no, look over there. Well, they're practicing. they're warming up on 31 and 32. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure where the championship is. It might be 20. We're talking 29 and 30, possibly. You could be right. Jason's not here, but I'm going to go over to 29 and 30 because I think Johnny Holmes knows that is going to be the. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to turn the mic off for a little bit here. Oh, yeah. You can see the scores on 29 and 30. Yeah, so I'm going to shut the mic off for a little bit here while I, these guys warm up, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Well, they're going to take the warm-up shots on here. 29 30, so I'm at a. I'm sitting behind 25 and 26, so I'm going to have to watch the screen, kind of see where they're playing, what they're doing. But uh, it'd be hard for me to watch the thing and then put a few uh, lanes away. Hey, hey, you guys want something to do now? Looks like so Jason's got to go take a picture of the top uh, three teams. You should be take uh, five. But you know, guy about taking the picture. He kind of got busy uh, doing this and getting scores and whatever, so we forgot about it. But a lot of teammates now. So we're gonna have uh, Bowman and Shipley. Uh, I don't believe ever bowl for singles or anything like at all in the CV. So John Holmes. And pulled, uh, I think he's got two seconds. And uh, he's won the doubles tournament uh, with Mike Woods twice. And he's got, uh, I don't remember how many CBA titles he is. John Hart is a CBA Hall of Fame member. And he is going to be inducted into the Twin City Hall of Fame uh, next Sunday. Yeah, you're the owner of South Bowl Bowl. South Bowl. I'm the owner of South Wave. Oh, South Wave. Southtown Wave Bowl. Look at their shirts, not that award. Yeah. All right. Yeah. At this point, you need to be nice. That was my fault. I'm not going to fall. 
Right again, they're finishing up their practice shots. Uh, so, if that's your win, that can only be won by holding you Yep. So, if you are like your next one, yep. you're going to bowl next, the next month, and have a $2,500 bet you win here, you'll only see you be so, cheering. Yeah. You should be cheering for Moan and Schiffler, and then you should show up. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And even if, even if you, uh, even if they win, uh, you know, try and hold win, it's still twelve hundred some dollar period. Right. Probably six or seven is a pretty common month. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, okay. So there was thirteen eighty that was added. This was double, so that's like you know six ninety. Yeah. Right. right. So probably six seven hundred added to that twelve hundred. Even if they do win, it's still another two thousand dollars. Yeah. And you, yeah, and you, and you, and you win, you get. We first started this way back, we did it on Eau Claire. Uh, it was in the 90s, something like that, we started it. Maybe it was early 2000, I don't remember exactly. And uh, I don't remember how much money we had in it. All I know is the first thing we paid 75% of the pot to start with, and then so all of a sudden the pot was not carrying over fast enough because people were winning it, and then there wasn't much left. So that's why we decided to just go half. Although we got three different ways to get in. You, it's $30 to get in. And if you're if you're in thirty dollars worth, you get fifty percent of the pot. If you're only in twenty dollars of that, you get thirty percent of the pot. And if you're only in ten dollars of that, you get twenty percent of the pot. So you can get in for any amount of money you want to get in. Which kind of leads me to uh, uh, talking about the entry fee for CBA and other tournaments I see around, and people say there's no money in a CBA. People like to bring that stuff up once in a while. They're, there is, of course, first of all. It's a hundred dollar entry fee, and if you win, you're usually getting somewhere between eight, nine, and hundred thousand dollars. Somewhere around in there. Okay, now if you want to get into the best of win, you want to get into the Saturday qualifying, you want to get into some breakfast, you can spend upwards of three, four hundred dollars, whatever you want to spend. And and if you win, the best you win, you can win a lot of money. Four thousand dollars based on brackets. Optional qualifying. Bet you the all, all kinds of stuff. So when people tell me uh, there's no money in it, and I read an article, it reminded me because I read this article, let me talk about the house shots versus uh, whatever it was. I can't remember the guy who wrote the article. Riggles that put it out for something. Big Mike or something like that, whatever. So he talks about he talks about that. But the people who say there's no money in it, uh, that's just because they're not good. Win. He's not wrong. Definitely not wrong. Um, people want to spend $25 for a chance to win $1,000. <laughs> uh, and that's called the lottery. Uh, exactly, yeah. You can, you can, and that takes no skill. Right. So, um, they allow you to have similar goals start on the left lane. And I was talking about this earlier, and that's what I would have done too, because it looks like Bowen really struggled on the right lane. Uh, and so, if you're going to try and you want to be on that right lane to finish, but I think something's different. Now, could have been the last lane pair there on, or it could have just been um, just that particular lane, or I don't know what. So, we're going to have... Uh, a first time winner or something to that. Yeah, what? So That's yeah. always cool. Yeah, well, that is always cool, yeah. New so. banners. Yeah. So, the one in the ship was done with a double. But they like that left lane. So, what Johnny, the Johnny's got to do is keep it slow. Keep it close. Pick up your spares, stay clean. Don't chop this spare. Shouldn't be talking like that. So John Cryer, who is focused as much as anybody I know as a bowler, uh, he might joke a little bit with these guys because they're teammates, but he wants to beat them bad. Uh, and he's going to well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then a solid eight. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, very good shot. Yeah, anytime you leave that. Yes. Right. Exactly, yes. 
he's, he should. He'd still win a lot. I think he should too. He's in, he's in the CBA Hall of Fame. And I didn't talk about that. He's going to get into the Hall of Fame next, next Sunday. He gets uh, I just wish, oh yeah, I wish he pull more. He's yeah, always won. Yeah, yeah, he still has them. Uh, yeah, he still has them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, you know, he basically talked about that, like, with Steve Team, because he was going to get and things like that. So, I get that he wants to come off and here and there. Son Brandon, very good lefty. Uh, could have him come out here bowling with him. And maybe he'll do that. Because yeah. Brandon did throw a master's to run one time. Well, <laughs> solid eight uh, for each one of the teams so far. Solid 10. Um, you can say the angle of all going in the pocket, but at that point you want to be at the angle going in the pocket. So, uh, whatever reason you left that I couldn't uh, It's just a solid 10. It wasn't the half 10. Right? And John Pryor for being you know, high flush, leaving that 8 pin, you know, 9 pin for the right hand, whatever it is. It's a killer. Right. A million dollar 8 pin. I just have a million dollar 9 pin for the right hand or whatever. I missed one of those yesterday. Yeah. Cost me a million dollars. Or it cost me, you know, $120 cash. Same thing, cost me money. It really did. I had uh, uh, five single pins I missed yesterday. It was one of them, three or ten pins. We missed cash by ten pins. Oh, exactly. All pins count all the time. I went to bowl a senior master one time in uh, he bowled, put all 10 back on that one. But I went to bowl a senior master in Indianapolis one time. Uh, Chuck Bashaw, I went up. Chuck Bashaw and myself, we went there to bowl. And Lumpy gave me you know, good advice, which he, you know, he goes, just remember, all pins count all the time. We bowl three five game blocks on three different days. You can't just give up a pin or two or yeah. say the tenth frame of this game on a count ball. You just got to come out of that. So that is such a spread. Yes, exactly. Okay, carries that one right there. So we have ten pin advantage for the the Johnny Squared for the Bone and Shipper. So we have a good lead right now for the Fire Holmes duo. And what's happening is the bone shipper left lane to 40, 50, whatever you think it's up. They slipped a little bit on the yeah. So yeah. they can still have 227, but Fryer and Holmes have a lot score on that right lane. Maybe crying down oh on the left. Uh, and, I wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure if you heard that screen going yeah. down there about 20 lanes away. I know it's a long way away, but still there's noise in the You can hear it. And there's noise in the bowling center, and they're going to make noise because, you know, this is not a close enough yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, you know. Right. And, and we don't own the place, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> noise. It's a bowling center. There's always noise. Oh, exactly. Johnny through the 
known for the avalanche ninth frame strike. Anyway, you don't know what avalanche is, I'm going to explain that. Tom Havlis, a good friend of ours, owner of mnbowling.com website, good boy. He would throw the ball through the nose so often, instead of calling it avalanche. And he just did that, and then, I'm not sure what Greg did on that one, but that was his worst that he's thrown in four games worth. Exactly. So, uh, really, I don't know what he did. He was up to 710, he tried to get up more and just missed it or something like that. But, but you know, John Cryer, he's just going to get them all the to get to the 269 and have that huge yep. lead. Just focus, and uh, he's going to carry John Holmes to his first every time. I can just see he left a solid eight. Other than that, uh, they're looking at 290 this game. Right. Yeah, 269. Now they did get one long, you know, long way. Johnny got, the, of course, one in the ninth. And then might have been the one he threw last frame where he did throw it really like he wanted, but he still struck. So makes up for the. Eight for the allowance. So 195 max for bonus ship. 269 max. That is going to be a 70 something lead. It could be 80 some kids. It's looking 80 from the penny. But 258 first game. And you got to believe Bowman and Ship were going to their tougher lane. Max in that 190 here. Yeah. That's why they're going to bowl. It ain't over until it's over. That was the Yogi Bear. I was trying to think of something different than what he actually said. I was waiting for you to tell me what he'd say, because I'm like, yeah, I didn't want Yogi Bear. Yogi played ball, you know? Yeah, I was trying to think of something that he didn't say that what he would have said if he was watching ball. I like what he was say when like, you go to a busy restaurant. And he goes, ah, nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. <laughs> so we got 185 to 258. That's 73. Yeah. That's a lot to make up. So there's well, it's just like the last match. Exactly. Right? It's, uh, I think it's a 227. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a 228. It's over. It's over. Yeah. So, but they're not going to be looking at that. John Holmes is going to. So this is simply going up there starting. And, you know, I know they're friends and teammates, but it's kind of going against yeah. him. He doesn't know the real team on the left to start. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter. But if the team on the left cared, he could have said, hey, you can't go. Yeah. Um, but, and I don't think he really knows. John Holmes going, I need to just throw five shots like that. Right. And yeah. One down. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, if I throw four or five like that, we're going to have five or six in a row or eight in a row or whatever, because he's going to carry most of So, Craig, um, so he, he leaves a 10 pin, he left an 8 pin, then a 10 pin, then a 7 pin, then a wash. So, don't know if that 8 pin flustered him a little bit, maybe not. He looks like he might be changing the ball or something, I don't know. Something maybe maybe just uh, affected his releases. I don't know. Yeah. Or it could just be the lane changed just enough. Yes. Yeah. And Steve going up there while John is re -blanking. Now I would have waited until he was done re -blanking. So it's like they're rushing. So he jumped up there to the ball. Right. right. Steve jumps up there to the ball. Right, exactly. So you talk about the, you know, slowing the game down, let the game feel right. Uh, there's the rush of this being left. Yeah. John took his time, he slowed it down a little bit. I know he just might be still too Yeah. Well, Johnny Holmes going, I'm going to get a strike there, so now I'm going to get myself. Okay, well, they can only until 278 they can get.
All right. Strike spare. Fill frames. You don't get to that 200. For sure. When you fill frames, you're going to get to 200. Close to it or whatever. Depending on how you know, it's in the double or something. All right. This what I talk about, uh, we talked about a little earlier today. Johnny just said, Johnny Holmes, that is at 248, 300, 300. Last uh, Wednesday at, uh, at, what was that, the, not Blamebird. We had Blamebird, or I'm not sure. Anyway, how do you carry that off? How do you carry that much? How do you carry that much and keep back to back 300? Amazing. You're going to get bad breaks along the way. And of course, you're going to get lucky breaks to carry one. So, all right. Now we're back. Uh, Schiffler and Bone. Get the double. This is huge right here. If you put some pressure on them. How do you throw that one? I don't think it's going to be bouncing. No, I'm not sure if you bounce it. Or if you want to hand to it or something. For the bucket. Are you using some hand talent also? No. I'm trying to throw the ball. Whether he leaves the seven pin or strike. Well, I guess you could leave the eight or nine. Oh, God. Oh, Tom Jones, it wasn't playing. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice, solid flush. Tom Jones, who are you cheering for? Your teammates? Oh, that'd be a good answer. Wow. Can you pick up that spare? I mean, that's topical in so many ways, but the. Lots of pin count there. And then didn't strike, so. Still at the 250 mark. John Holmes, solid. Okay. Just what you want to do, Johnny. Left that 7 or 10 pin last time. Oh, he's shooting for the purple shirt. Boy, that's a Oh, yeah. Same thing as the teammate, I guess. White splasher. Not over yet. Single title before, which a couple years ago, year end, uh, was up at uh, World Blade. He was second, three, two, yeah. three, or whatever it was. Right? Um, yeah, shot Johnny. No, that's a different one. Oh, that's when Newman beat uh, David Lang. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. 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 They can, uh, they can celebrate. They can celebrate that yeah. champion and. John Holmes, his dad, Rich, is here to see him win his first cool, ever man. CBA title. Oh, very cool. And he comes, John, Rich Holmes comes and watches Johnny Bowl every place he bowls, all the time. He's on the Fridays, I mean, in the summer, I swear he's been watching the bowls. You know, he watches him up at Blaver, shoots up. Oh, good, solid old 7 9. Good thing he didn't need that. All right, I'm really happy for John. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. And John prior to, but um, he's won. Yeah, he's. Like you said, Hall of Famer. Yeah. With, uh, you know, whatever. 11, 11 titles. I can't remember. 
Yeah, you, can, you might have more now. Yeah. Uh, we got the well, books. Book. <laughs> Look at that. 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 Look at I will tell you how many uh, you know, try your ass, but I need to know myself, that's so why I'm going to tell you. Get the JK. We have 18, 19, we've got 20 now. Holy smokes. I sold way too many. Exactly, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. All right, so 20 CBA titles for John Cryer. One. Say congratulations to John Holt. Yes. Be back. All right, for those of you still watching at home, November 20th will be the CBA at Park Grove. As we see, John with a 4 6 10. Um, that'll be the second leg of the Roller of the Decades event, sponsored by the locker guy, Tom Corbett. And then. Uh, I don't remember the date, it's the uh, second. Sunday in December. That will be the CBA Masters and that will be at South Town Lanes. Other than that, that's going to wrap up this show. We've got, uh, we'll uh, go down and get congratulations to John Holmes and John Cryer. John Holmes on his first CBA title. John that I taught everything 20. he knew about bowling. <laughs> Rich Holmes says he taught Johnny everything that he knows about bowling. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, long weekend. Um, it was a lot of fun. Great turnout. Uh, thanks to the staff management ownership here at Mermaid uh, Triple Shift Entertainment for hosting us. John Foss, uh, district manager, helping set everything up. Uh, service was great. We appreciate everything, and we will see you possibly, hopefully, in lacrosse for the lacrosse open on the 19th of November. And no matter what, guaranteed, we will be online and running on the 20th of November for the CBA at Park Grove. Other than that, that's well, I all a, I got. I got a little, a little tidbit. Oh, here we go. John Pryor just told me. That was the highest game on the right lane all tournament. And the 182 on the left lane was the lowest game on the left lane all tournament. Huh. Funny. Factoid. Factoid, yeah. So, uh, but, Very cool. Uh, it was really cool to see him win. Uh, 20th CBA title for John. Also, his third partner he's won with. Oh, not about uh, yeah, him. with Adam Kittleson way, Kittleson, way back. Yep. And then Mike Burrs and now John Holmes. So, uh, good for him. Good yep. for John Holmes. And good showing for Bowen and Schiffler. Yep. So other than that, I know you're talking about uh, hopefully we get to go to lacrosse and yeah. do a little live stream at the lacrosse open yeah, for the with Hilly and Millie. I'm, I'm planning on it. we got to wear our uh, attire from the 20s and 30s, Roaring 20 days. Hey, thanks so, for the Thanks for the tournament. Thanks thanks for the tournament there, uh, Absolutely. Good as good as I can see. Oh, so uh, that was Craig just coming here thanking Jason for running the tournament. So uh, it's always nice. I could talk to earlier for somebody to thank you for running the tournament. I always appreciate it. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, Bowler of the Decades, like I said, the 20th, so if we don't make the cross for any reason, we sure will try. Um, and for the 20th, we'll have a part girl for that locker guy, second leg of the locker guy, Bowler of the Decades, and then uh, again in December, we'll be at the uh, South Town for um, the CBA Masters. Oh, Masters right? Yep, okay. and at the end of that month, we'll have the Minnesota Masters as well. A lot of stuff coming up. A lot coming up. Okay. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. Your prediction finally came